Everyone says they want to change the world. But not everyone will. We are not everyone. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. How do we solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems? Our doctors and specialists collaborate, sharing their vast knowledge and Mayo Clinic's unique expertise. It's this working together that helps solve our patients' hard-to-solve medical problems. Monument Health, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. home tells a story. Wherever you live, whatever your style, express yourself with Ashley Home Store. So many styles to help tell your story and create your unique dream home. Ashley Home Store. This is home. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholtauto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. We think quality and craftsmanship. That's why at Badlands Distillery, all of our spirits are made in-house, one small batch at a time. We believe the best spirits start with the best ingredients, so we're proud that the Badlands Distillery lineup uses high quality, locally sourced ingredients. So the next time you enjoy the smooth taste of a Badlands Distillery spirit, you know you're drinking the best. Badlands Distillery, proudly American made. If you're hunting for a great deal on your next ride, get into Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pier. We're locked and loaded on all of our new and used inventory, like this 2018 Toyota Highlander, only $28,495. Looking for low price reliability? Try a 2011 Honda Accord for only $6,995. Who wants a loaded up truck? We have a 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 LTZ for only $17,995. Get to Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pier, 518 East Sioux Avenue. Call 605-224-7378 and visit Gateway FL. LT.com.
We hope you are all enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LiveTicket.tv coverage of the final first round game. It is the South Central Storm at 11 and 8 taking on the winner Clone Pheasants in game 16 of the 2021 South Dakota Amateur Baseball Tournament. We're going to get you starting lineups as we've got first pitch underway. And I think they said, what, uh, 150. Correct. Fly ball from your leadoff hitter, Jaden Frank, flown out to right field and it's going to be taken by the second baseman Reed Harder who will cut in front of Jeff Harris out right field to take that out let's go ahead and set the batting order here that Jaden Frank led things off he's going to be the left fielder today for the South Central Storm this this is Christian Schwegert the center fielder he will bat second JJ Beck will bat third and play second Aaron Vamachka will be the cleanup hitter in DH Today, Cole Christofferson will play first and bat fifth. Jay Vanderwerf will play shortstop and bat seventh. Blake Bowes, or excuse me, sixth. Blake Bowes will bat seventh, playing right field. And there is a ground out. And that'll bring J.J. Beck to the plate, finishing out that batting order for South Central. Braden McKnight will bat eighth and play third, and Chase Faulkner will bat ninth and catch. We'll try to set the defense for you. The battery today is Patrick Starr, the left-hander, with that 4-1 and one record. Getting the nod here in game one. Catching him is Chandler Bakley. Defensively, the infield from first to third is Dylan Lamley, Reed Harder, Derek Gracer, and Brendan Kemmerzall. Cutting a miss for J.J., the outfield for the Pheasants in left field is Austin Calhoun. Center field is Lakin Negebauer, and Jeff Harris gets the start in right field today. You know, looking at South Central, I mean, it's really weird to look at two teams like uh, these. You got South Central, who's a really athletic team, uh, comes in. Most of these guys played basketball, football in high school, and now they're on the amateur baseball field playing for South Central. And then you got, oop, that one hit right field. Yeah. Jeff Harris tracking in right field will make the catch and that'll be a clean sweep for the Pheasants here in the top of the first. They'll go one, two, three. We're going to step away for 60 seconds, but we'll make it 90 seconds and then we'll be back to set the defense for the South Central Storm and the batting lineup for the Winter Clone Pheasants. Harry K. Ford is your only dealer who does $29.95 oil changes every day. Yep, that includes all the oil for the vehicle. Those other guys don't do that. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at MenholtAuto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. 
Have a great game and knock one out of the park. From Denny Men Holt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Give me a count. Yeah. Welcome back here to Cadwell Park in Mitchell, South Dakota. Jody Brozick of LiveTicket.tv joined today by Charlie Preen of Mount Vernon Mustangs. We'll call it MVP Titans Live. They're coming back, folks, and Charlie Preen will be the man behind the new channel coming out of Mount Vernon. Let's go ahead and get to the starting lineup here for South Central today. Uh, on the mound doing the pitching. This is going to be Aaron Sunquist. He'll be caught by J.J. Beck. The infield from first to third is Braden McKnight. J.J. Beck, the shortstop, is Jade Vanderwerf. And over at third is Brandon McKnight. The outfield from left to right is Jaden Frank. And let's take a look. Center fielder is Christian Swagger. And right field today is Blake Bose, the lefty. Thought I might see Bose get the start on the mound. Did not. The lineup for the Pheasants. Batting order. Derek Gracer, the uh, longtime Pheasant, is going to get the start at shortstop. And he'll lead off. He'll be followed by Jeff Harris, the pickup player from the Parkston Mudcats, who will play right field. Reed Harder is the second baseman, will bat third and play second. Chandler Bakley will bat cleanup and catch. 3-0 delivery, going to catch. It's going to be a curveball out of Sunquist, and that will catch for a strike. It counts 3-1. and one. Batting fifth today is Austin Calhoun, the left fielder. Dylan Lamley will bat sixth and play first. And the 3-1 offering is going to be popped up and out of Cadwell Fan Park for strike two. Count will work full to the leadoff hitter, David Derek Sam Gracer. Austin Ritchie is going to DH for Patrick Starr and bat seventh. Brendan Kamerzal will bat eighth and play third base. And Lakin Nagabauer will round things out the double leadoff. Center fielder and number nine hitter. Sunquist started the climb back, couldn't finish it. It's going to issue a base on balls Maddie to Derek Gracer. Right fielder, and that'll bring eight, up Jeff number eight, Jeff Harris, the right fielder. Taking a look at season averages here. I wanted to take a look at Sunquist. Sunquist 0-1 on the season, but typically, you know, he's one of those kids that's getting the toughest matchups. Uh, these two teams, as Charlie and I talked about in between games as we were previewing this game, they met May 11th. That was the first game of the year for both of these teams. It was a 13-4 victory by the Winter Clone Pheasants over the South Central Storm. But we agreed. A lot has changed probably since that May 11th date to today. It's been almost two months since that last one. Uh, almost by the day, we're three off. But it's just crazy to see how teams change over three months, you know, South Central, like I was saying earlier, and then got cut off in that pop fly out to right field, but South Central's a really athletic team, but you're facing Winter Cologne, who has, I mean, a serious past in this tournament. They come in, that one's getting thrown down. Gracer on the move, 1-1 one, one count, it's gonna be a ball. Count will go two and one, and Gracer's gonna swipe second. But as I was saying, uh, no, Winter Cologne has a serious pass in this tournament, and it's going to be really, really hard to get past this uh, Winter Cologne team. Winter Cologne beat them on the 11th of May by uh, six, I believe. 13-4. Oh, yeah, right, correct. 13-4, correct. Thir to four, and then the very next night they played the Cologne Chaos, and they won 11 to nothing when we were looking back. Harris going to pop this one down the left field line. Coming in, giving chase and making the effort in that big, wide foul territory. And it's going to fall foul. Let's see if we can update our game changer, and we're going to follow along with this. Harris at the plate, the pickup player. He's got a 360 average. And there we have the game. We'll pull it up. It was Frank out in left field giving chase and couldn't come up with that one. It's going to give Sunquist uh, kind of a tip of the hat. He's up one and two in the count. Harris going to slap that to the shortstop. Vanderwerf going to bounce it off his chest. He'll make the strong throw over to first. And it's going to bounce off the chest of his first baseman. And he's able to 
uh, collected is Cole Batting Christofferson. Third, Cologne, the second baseman, number 15, Reed so there's Harder. one in the books, and that'll bring Captain Chaos, as I call him, uh, Reed Harder to the plate. You know Reed pretty well. You know that. I do. Well, you know Zach better than Reed. Right. <laughs> I know uh, both of them. Reed was a substitute teacher of mine, and uh, Zach's my football coach, but Reed is a really shifty guy. Would not be surprised if uh, he gets one on base here. This one going to be popped up. It's going to go towards the screen and just get over the screen, and somebody misses it, and that will draw some boos from the press box and maybe the, the fans below. Reed up shifty, as you call them. That's funny because my first meeting with Reed Harder was in flag football. And he was shifty. And that was the word I used to describe him the first time I met him almost 16 years ago. So in 16 years, he has not much has changed. <laughs> <laughs> Reed uh, down in the count now, 0-1, toss back to second, trying to pick Gracer. Back pick does not work. He's in safely. Reed Harder will step to the plate in his average 377 hitter on the season. He'll get an 0-1 pitch here from Sunquist. Yeah. Highway 18 day here at Cadwell Park. Clone Chaos lose game one here of the morning session. Eight to six, and that was on a two-run home run in the bottom of the seventh that propelled the Salem Cubs to the first round victory over the Clone Chaos. 0-2 the pitch count. Sunquist takes a long look. Beautiful skies today. Sun beaten down. Reed's going to whack at that 0-2 pitch and send it down the right field line. We'll do it all over again, 0-2. clap your hands. Christofferson at first. J.J. Beck at second. Jade Vanderwerf at shortstop. McKnight over at third. Frank in left. Schwegert in center and Bowes in right. Your battery is Sunquist and Faulkner. O2 long look by Sunquist checks Gracer and kicks it home and Reed chases and can't catch up to the high heat and there's two in the books here for the South Central Storm and that'll bring to the plate the cleanup hitter this is Chandler Bakley Bakley this season taking a look at his body of work a 413 hitter on the season he's been in this four hole every single game he's played this year well, pretty high batting averages for Winter Cologne. Uh, pretty impressive from what they bring to the table. Sunquist curveball will catch the corner. Good for a called strike. Oh, on the count. Sunquist working very methodically up on the mound. Gets his sign. Checks Gracer again. Curveball is driven towards right field, out and right. Giving chase, making the catch. Blake Bowes will put the pheasants down. They'll get no runs on no hits. They'll strand one. We go to top of two. The storm coming to the plate in 60 seconds. At Ashley Home Store, when we say we got it, we really mean it. We've got all the popular styles for every room in your home, as well as some of the highest quality and customer ratings in the industry. Not to mention, we've also got the top mattress brands like Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley Sleep. And payroll deduction financing available so you can take time to pay. So come in today and see why your Pierre Ashley Home Store is the top choice for everything home. Hurry in. We're located on South Garfield Avenue in Pierre. This is home. Right now is a great time to be planning for the next growing season. Fall fertilizer application can give your crops a strong start in the spring. Because the nutrients available and needed in each field vary, your Actegra agronomist can help determine your specific nutrient needs and the benefits of applying them now. To optimize your inputs for next year's crop, contact your Actegra agronomist for details or visit actegra.com today. Welcome back to Cadwell Park here in Mitchell, South Dakota. This is the 89th Annual South Dakota Amateur Baseball Association Baseball Tournament. Today's game is the 16th and final game of the first round. We'll go to second round action 
in the uh, evening session, which will start at 5.30. Final game featuring the South Central Storm and the Winter Clone Pheasants. Jody Brozick of LiveTicket.tv and Charlie Preen of MVP Titans Live bringing you the call today. You know, Jody, I'm really looking forward to the evening session tonight. Uh, fans, if you can, tune into that one. We're due up for some really, really good ball games. And we've had some really, really good ball games, too. You're absolutely right. When you get to that second round, it's not quite the quarters, but you can feel the energy and the excitement start to pick up. Patrick Starr on the mound being caught by Chandler Bakley. At the plate, this is Aaron Vamachka, the DH for the Storm. He'll foul that one into the netting and even this count at one ball, one strike. Patrick, one of the first-year player for the Pheasants, the lefty, got to see him out of the chute. He's got some big wins and suffered a tough loss. I think that was to the Alexandria Angels, his one and only loss on the year. Called strike as it paints the black, counts one and two. One-two offering, going to be cut on and miss for strike three. That's one in the books. Vamachka will take a seat. Now coming to the plate, I believe for the storm. this is number, number 50, 50, Cole Christofferson. Cole Christofferson will step to the plate. That number five spot, 286 hitter on the season for the storm. Storm come out of the Pony Hill League. And Christofferson will take a look at a call strike one. Oh, one ripped down that right field line, drifting foul. Harris giving chase, makes the catch out in right field. What a catch! Jeff Harris lays out vertical and will slide about five yards to come up with the out. For South Central, the shortstop number three, Jade Vanderwerf. Shortstop Jade Vanderwerf going to come to the plate now. Jade, you'll also possibly see him on the mound here. 281 hitter for the storm. You know, just seeing, I've never seen Star pitch before, but uh, in his first few uh, at-bats so far today, one thing I see from him, he is very, very aggressive, uh, and so far it's paid off. He's uh, got one in that last 0-2, threw an outside uh, fastball, got him. You know, he's really fun to watch for so far. The lefty really showing right there what he can do. Patrick able to hit his spots. That's one thing that he likes to do. He can. He likes to get up top early on the hitters, force them to hit his best stuff not be forced to dial in and deliver. That 0-2 is going to be in the dirt. Nice stop by Bakley. Count will go 1-2. and two. You're absolutely right, Charlie. Patrick, one of the things that I noticed about him, able to work inside, outside. He'll come up on the letters. He's able to work all the edges. This one going to be popped up and over the press box. Count will remain one and two to your shortstop, Jade Vanderwerf, the South Central Storm shortstop. Good crowd on hand here today as it was Highway 18 day here at Cadwell Park with the Clome Chaos opening. There's a rip down the third base line and it's going to skip in the agri line and Jade Vanderwerf's got a base hit. Brendan Kemmerzall came over and got his feet in front of it and it just skipped back to the left. Nothing you can do about those, and if you're the batter, you got to enjoy having a little bit of luck on your side. Okay. Vanderwerf aboard, and that's going to bring number two to the plate. This is Blake Bowes, the right fielder, a 262 hitter for the Storm. Really, really good pitcher. The lefty that they'll look to go to possibly later in the game if they can. Star hits the spot, paints the black. Playing a little bit of Picasso on the outer edge. One thing I've noticed is he always starts off with a strike. He finds himself an 0-2 counts early. It usually uh, helps out, and there he gets an 0-2 count already. 0-2 now to Blake Bowes. Blake will look to choke up here, shorten up, and move up in the box. Patrick with a nice-looking breaking ball. Look for uh, Patrick to be super aggressive here. Blake calls time. He wants to come in and he wants to bat at his own pace, not Patrick's. Mm -hmm. Throw off that rhythm a little bit and see if he can work him out of the strike zone. 0-2 is on the way. Oh. 
High cheese and a little bit tardy was Bose, and that means he'll be retired on strikes. South Central, they'll have no runs on one hit. That's Squibbler down the third baseline. They'll strand one. Vanderwerf stranded over at first. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Pheasants coming to the plate in the home half. Harry K. Ford, your go-to dealer for transparency and the lowest prices. From sales to service, we pride ourselves on transparency and low prices. It's who we are every day. Family, friends, and Fords, in that order. We've got a history of serving you. A history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank, member FDIC. First class banking on a first name basis. Welcome back to the beautiful Cadwell Park, home of the 2021 South Dakota Amateur Baseball Association's state tournament. Final game of the first round, the South Central Storm have sent seven batters to the plate. And we go to the bottom half of the plate. Winter Clone will send the number five hitter, Austin Calhoun, to the plate. Interesting thing about Austin Calhoun, he leads all Class B players. He's got 36 RBIs this year in Class B. Ooh. Kind of an unusual situation for him here. The table is not set, so we'll just see if he can get aboard. AC good pop in those hips, too. Threat to go yard. This one's going to be a hard grounder out to J.J. Beck. He'll backhand it and get the throw over to Christofferson on the 4-3 put out. Dylan Lambley. Now coming to the plate will be first baseman Dylan Lamley. Checking Lamley's body of work this season. Dylan, a 409 hitter. He was a part of a game that you didn't get to call, but it was the Mount Vernon Mustangs game in winter where they fell behind to the Mustangs huge early, only to see them come up with like a six or a seven run eighth inning. Lamley with a game winning double to score two in that game, or one, excuse me. It was just a walk off in the bottom of the ninth as my, my memory is resetting. <laughs> yep. I remember hearing about that. Now, uh, Mustangs and the Pheasants each split this year, one game apiece, 11-10 and 9-8, and both home teams won in walk-off fashion. Yeah. Pretty Sunquist crazy. will dial and deliver. That's going to be off the edge of the plate. Count's going to be 2-0. and oh. This will be a hitter's pitch for Lamley. Sunquist comes right down the heart of the plate. Belt high, good for a called strike. 2-1, the count to the first baseman. This is what I refer to as murderer's row. When you get to Austin, Calhoun, Lamley, Ritchie, and Camerzal, they're all heavy swinging sticks up at the plate. Breaking ball on a 2-1 toss will miss. Can't catch that corner. Count goes three and one. Lamley turns to the home plate umpire. Asks, was it close? He wants to remember that one just in case. Sunquist deals, and it's going to be a flare out to J.J. Beck, and he'll get his leather underneath it, collect it for the F4 put out. For Winter Cologne, the designated hitter number 16, Austin Ritchie. Austin Ritchie. We call him AR-16, not AR-15, back when we're doing the home games. He likes that. He thinks he's a semi-automatic weapon for the Pheasants. <laughs> Looks like he can hit. Uh, is he? I have never seen the guy run before. Is he pretty quick down the baselines? Er, er, uh, Austin's not going to be really fleet of foot. Right. He, he's looking to swing. He's thinking extra bases when he steps to the plate. Takes a look at ball one from Sunquist off the edge. Austin, uh, can't, hate to keep referring back to that Mustangs game, but he had a three-run shot in that game that really got the Pheasants back into it. Sunquist next delivery will stay just above the letters. Count will go 2-0. and oh. well, 
or Richie the with rare. the. Hey, you can go ahead. I was just going to say you're going to notice Richie takes a very methodical approach to every at bat in the box. Flared out to right field, and Bowes tracking will make the catch for out number three. Four Pheasants go one, two, bottom. three here in the home the half run. of the second. No hits, no we'll be back no here left. with the storm After coming to the plate in sixty seconds. Feel more confident and in control of your financial life. Ameriprise Advisors can work with you to provide personalized, goal-based advice based on your short and long-term goals. Plus, you can track your investments and financial solutions with our digital tools and regular meetings. Call John Pokup at 1-800-713-9160 to see the multiple ways I can help you on your retirement journey. Legacy Financial Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, is located at 218 South Monroe Street in Winter, South Dakota. Member FINRA and SIPC. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at MenholtAuto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Welcome Program back to Mitchell, South seven, Dakota, and live ticket.tv coverage of the amateur baseball five. tournament. Step into the plate. This is Brandon McKnight, the 400 hitter. You know, Brandon batting in that eight spot with a 400 average. You don't see that very often where you tuck somebody deep in the lineup. First pitch is going to be chopped foul. Cameras all will collect it in foul territory. And Patrick Stars on top again, a one and a count. Interesting thing about Patrick Starr as he delivers here. Chopped foul again. again Cal will be 0-2. There were a couple of amateur games this season. Seven, Patrick six, didn't three. suit up. He actually threw on the umpire's uniform and got behind the plate and was calling games wow. for the winter clone pheasants. All, also a certified umpire here for South Dakota Amateur Baseball. So you have a few because I believe Reed Harder is also certified. Yes. Flare out towards Reed Harder and he's going to go all the way out into right field. Make the catch, flip it to that Harris. For the storm, the catcher, number 10, James and that'll Walker. be an F4 put out. Reed showing his range. Kind McKnight. of ironic. <laughs> Just <laughs> talking about it. Cued him up well. <laughs> right. Now step into the plate. This will be number 10, Jace Faulkner, the catcher for South Central. Hitting right below that Mendoza line at 222 on the season. Star, first pitch strike, comes inside with a fastball, plays Picasso with that black. Faulkner waves the bat and waits, cuts at an outside fastball, 0-2. Winds blowing in from left field towards the grandstand here as Faulkner chases the high All heat. Right, no That'll be another strikeout here for Patrick Starr. And just starting to check the stats. Starr already. Seven, That'll be his third strikeout right here as we go. That's seventh Four, batter seven central, the the order, and three strikeouts. Jaden Frank. Frank will come to the plate. Storm flipping this order over to the top of the order. Frank was retired in his first at bat. It's going to be a ground ball out to Reed Harder. The vacuum will suck it up and deliver it to Lamley. And we've got another ABC 1 2 3 inning here at Cadwell. No runs, no hits, no errors, no men left on base. We'll be back for the home half of the third and 60 seconds. Shop local with Burke and Gregory Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores, specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crew at Burke and Gregory Building Centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. Follow them on Facebook and shop online anytime at bgbuildingcenter.com. 
Join the team and take on your legacy. Since 1862, the South Dakota Army National Guard has been ready to defend our freedom and our way of life. When our nation calls, we are there to help our friends, neighbors, and communities in the event of forest fires, floods, tornadoes, and severe winter storms right here in South Dakota. Now we want you to write the next chapter in our rich history of the South Dakota Army National Guard. Visit their Facebook and Instagram pages or nationalguard.com slash SD. Welcome back here to Cadwell Park. The Winter Clone Pheasants coming to the plate. They'll send Camerzal, Nagabauer in the top of the order. Racer to the plate here in the bottom of the third. This game moving along rapidly. We said, what, 150 first pitch? And we're 29 minutes into this game and almost a third of the way through the game. Both teams, Sunquist doing a really nice job, and Patrick Starr on the mound making these guys hitters. You know, for fans at home watching Star, it might not be too impressive. Uh, he's got three strikeouts so far, like you said, but it's just very impressive to sit up here in the booth and watch a pitcher with control like that go after batters. It's it's really fun to watch and truly uh, a spectacle for guys like you and I. And on the flip side of this, you've got the storm. I'm going to go ahead and adjust our cameras just a little bit as the sun is getting really, we're about that, uh, not quite high noon, a little past. Sunquist has been challenging the Pheasants lineup, and that's really interesting. A young pitcher out here for the storm, not backing away from the big lumber, the heavy logs of the winter clone Pheasants going right after them. Gets on top of cameras all 0-1 with a fastball, comes breaking ball, pitch two. Good for an 0-2 count in Sunquist's favor. Sunquist takes a long look. Camerzal at one time led the team in hitting, was batting cleanup. Interesting to see him, or he was batting third in that lineup. Now they've slid him down to the number eight spot. We talked about on the other side, the uh, it was McKnight with the 400 average in that eight spot. Camerzal will chop this fastball out to the shortstop Vanderwerf, and that'll be an E6. Vanderwerf saw that one eat him up out there at shortstop, bounces off the chest, and he panics and throws a shot over to first. That will pull his first baseman off the bag. That's going to bring Lake and Nagabauer to the plate. With cameras all aboard, you might see Lake and Nagabauer, the quick, fleet footed center fielder for the Pheasants, put down a drag bunt. And now you're starting to see McKnight move up onto the edge of the grass in anticipa anticipation. Lake in a great drag bunter. Does it, and he goes to the right side of the diamond. Sunquist plays it excellently. Pounces off the mound, collects it, and will deliver for a 1-3 put out. Camerzal will move up to second on the sacrifice. Top of the order, Derek Racer now coming to the plate. Didn't get a chance. Racer, 400 hitter on the season in that leadoff spot. Cameras all in the number eight spot, a 404 hitter. So you've got McKnight for the Storm, a 400 hitter, and Cameras all a 404 hitter in the eight spot today. Some heavy, good, well, good averages up and down these orders. Check, check swing, kind of an excuse me swing out of Derek Gracer, and it's going to work as it floats to right field in front of Blake Bowes. That'll move Cameras all up to third. Pheasants have runners on the corners, and Jeff Harris. The all-star for the Parkston Mudcats playing right field today as a pickup player for the Pheasants will step to the plate. Taking a look over at the third base coaching box, J.J. Farner, who we'll see on the bump eventually is if the Pheasants are able to continue in this tournament. He would get one of the starts undoubtedly. Rolling the signs for the Pheasants. Sunquist checks both runners. Goose on the move, throw down to second. Sunquist thought about cutting that. And uh, we'll let it go through. J.J. Beck didn't break for the bag. Vanderwerf was one that was going to collect that. 
So a pair of runners in scoring position here for Jeff Harris, the left-handed hitting right fielder. Sunquist, nice looking fastball, and it's going to be grounded out to the second baseman. And we'll see how they score that one. I would think a hit. Air, they're going to air. So Harris will reach on the air, and that will drive in Camerzal from third for the first run of this game. That'll make your score one to nothing. Gracer will move up to third base. And the Pheasants with runners on the corners, still only one away as Reed Harder steps to the plate. Reed, a 377 hitter. The shifty second baseman. <laughs> yeah, he truly is. Uh, let's see what he does here with one out. I could see a bunt. There's not going to be a force uh, anywhere pushing, uh, I think it's Grace over there on three uh, home. Harris is going to swipe second. There's no throw from Faulkner. Faulkner thought about it, faked it, goes to second. So now you have runners at second and third. What are you looking for? You know, uh, Reed probably won't bunt anymore. No. I don't think he will. Uh, there's no force, obviously, but he'll try to get a base hit. But look at the left fielder out there. He is really close to the fence. I'll switch to that angle quick. But Reed's going to drive it to center field. Schweigert will take about 10 steps back, collect it, and Reed's going to have an RBI sacrifice fly. That will make the score 2-0. to zero. Harris moves up on the throw in to third base. That's ideal for Winter Cologne there. Uh, the couldn't have drew that up better. Chandler, right dead Bakley. center. <laughs> Perfect. Chandler Bakley now will step to the plate, the cleanup hitter. Chandler plays for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers baseball team. Spends his summer out at the ranch and as he's heading back to Martin, which is 100 miles west of Winter, he just stops in for a baseball game. <laughs> Going home and coming back to Mitchell. That goes to show that uh, college baseball will get you no matter where you're from. They'll find you. Yes, they will. Got to watch Chandler as an American Legion ball player. Really one of, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on their coach out there for years, bud. Um, but Chandler was one of their star players that teams in the south central portion of the state had to deal with all the time. Sunquist comes with an off-speed, like, looked like a change-up. Bakley's going to turn on it and send it down that left field line. That foul ball will make the count two and one. Yep, two one. Umpire flashes the fingers. How yeah. long has Bakley been with Winter Cologne? This will be his third season okay. here with the Winter Cologne Amateurs. Sunquist breaking ball will fall off the table for ball three. Three and one the count. Big spot here. You don't want to surrender that third run that's 90 feet away if you're Sunquist. You're facing the cleanup hitter. You got to come on 3 1, and he'll miss off the edge of the plate. Bakley will draw a base on balls. And here's the man I talked about, Austin Calhoun, who led the state in RBIs in Class B Four this season with runners on first Austin and third. Calhoun. The man also happens to hold a 491 batting average. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Courtesy runner, Oscar Pravacek at first. Courtesy runner at first base for Winter Cologne, number 44, Oscar Pravacek. Oscar with good wheels over there. He also plays for the Dakota Wesleyan Tigers. Let's see if they look to move him up into scoring position for AC. Sunquist will check him. Delivers home, and AC will flare it to left field. Coming in hard is Frank, and will make the catch on his knees for the third out. Huge play by Jaden Frank in left field for the Storm to limit the, the, the Pheasants to two runs. two runs. They come up one with hit. two runs on two one hit. There were two left. Storm errors they'll strand to. Two. We go to the Fans top of four. 
Limestone canyons, flowing waterfalls, and pristine beauty make Spearfish a sanctuary for those seeking the ultimate escape. Outdoor enthusiasts will find top-notch sport climbing, mountain biking, and UTV OHV trails. Guests are steps away from peaceful hiking trails and tranquil streams. Relax and rehash your day's adventure at one of our award-winning local breweries. Finding rest is an important part of any adventure. Lodging in Spearfish comes with a variety of choices, from cabins, B&Bs, and campgrounds to the comforts of your popular brand-name hotels. To find your unique adventure in Spearfish, go to visitspearfish.com. Calm now. At Monument Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, we are here to help you make your comeback. Our team is standing by to diagnose and treat your injury with some of the most advanced treatment options available and same-day appointments. Monument Health practitioners work closely with our therapists and physicians in communities throughout the Black Hills with locations in Rapid City and Spearfish. Visit monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. That's monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. Three complete here in Mitchell, South Dakota. This uh, South Central Storm Trail, the winter clone pheasants, two to nothing. Taking a look at the board right now out in right field. Storm with no runs on one hit. They committed two errors there in that bottom of the third. Winter clone with two runs on one hit. They've still played a clean game. Scores two to nothing. Christian Schweiger. Christian Schweiger going to lead things off. Star comes with a fastball down the heart of the plate about belt high. Steps off the bump. Looks like he might be reaching for the groin region. Might have stretched himself. Yep, he's pointing to the, he's actually right now, he's pointed to the dugout. And Oof. he wants somebody up and warming up. Oh, my. Yep, he pulled that. Patrick Star has tweaked that groin. And they need to get somebody up in the bullpen. Let's see who they're going to go to. Oh, no. Schweigert, 0 for 1 on the day. He's going to take a look at a ball in the dirt. He's up 2-1 in the count. You know, like we were talking about uh, between innings, you know, South Central is going to have to outrun Winter Cologne. And they aren't hitting off a star right now. And if star gets pulled like a, we think he will, there's a chance they might get some runs. Schweigert's going to be mm -hmm. called out. He was in the box when he bunted. No, actually, he was inside the chalk oh. in the ball. He touched the ball going up the first base line. That's, that's runner's interference, right? And he's going to be retired. Second baseman, JJ Beck. So second baseman, J.J. Beck, will now step to the plate. Star really laboring up there on the mound. There's an excuse me swing that we see go for a base hit. Second one today, Derek Gracer had the first. And this time for the Storm, J.J. Beck with an excuse me that's going to be good for a single. Storm with their second base runner of the day, and that'll bring to the plate Aaron Vamachka, the DH. Vamachka, 319 hitter for the Storm. Back with a decent sized lead. First pitch by Star, even with that bad groin, able to paint the black on the inner portion of the plate. Right now, he looks a lot better uh, status wise. It's going to be tough, though. I don't think a guy with a tweak growing from what we think it is up here will be able to finish a baseball game. Nice thing about it, it's warm enough, it's going to stay loose. Star deals on the outer half of the plate for a called or a swinging strike two. He's up in the count 0 and 2 on your batter Vamachka, the DH. Vamachka digs in, he's way up in the box, looking for something off speed out of Star. Offering the high heat can't induce the chase. Count will go one and two. Taking a look. Looks like AC playing Vamachka for a pretty, playing him relatively deep out in left field. The big hitter for the Storm. And it's going to be a chopper. Star limps off the mound. And oh. Dylan Lamley comes up with a huge play. Patrick planted and that groin didn't hold. One hopped into him. Lamley will knock it down and save the air and get the out for out number two. 
for South Central. That the does move for, or JJ Aaron back so up to time. second place. Oh, I'm off a batter. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, this is Christofferson. First pitch, fastball, and Christofferson will hack at that one. He was thinking all of 345, 350 with that swing. Didn't get shorted. Yeah, uh, not quite. J.J. Beck, good lead out at second. Being held by Harder. High heat stays up and away, and Patrick's got a 1-1 one, one count. Now, guess what the walk-up music for Patrick Starr is at Dakota Westland? I'm guessing something with SpongeBob. It is. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at that one right away. <laughs> Didn't say anything about it. This one driven shallow center field. Lake and Nagabauer tracking and makes the catch for out number three. South Central will come up with no runs on a J.J. Beck hit. They'll strand back out at second. Two nothing as we go to bottom of four in 60 seconds. Now is the time to save at Grossenberg Implement on hydraulic cylinders. Do you have an older one that you've been fighting for a while or continually or continuously adding hydraulic oil to? Then stop in this week and save 8% on all hydraulic cylinders only at Grossenberg Implement. Not sure you want to tackle the job to replace it? Grossenberg can do that too. Stop in today and see how Grossenberg can help you. Grossenberg Implement, service to the ag community since 1937. This is Jason with Dakota Carpet Restoration. No job is too small or too big. Leaked water from frozen pipes, sump pump failures, or a flooded basement? We can help. If your house is underwater, no problem. Call us right away. Even if it's 3 in the morning, we'll take care of the water damage before mold sets in. Dakota Carpet Restoration, 481-8709. The clean you expect, the service you deserve. Cadwell Park in Mitchell, South Dakota. This is the home of the 2021 South Dakota Amateur Baseball Association State Tournament. Real quick tidbit here as we just had military appreciation at Cadwell Park. Interesting thing about the South Central Storm, five of their players on this team currently serve in the guards or the reserve. Your this team please. loaded now with volunteers Storm, 12, that want to protect our country, our freedoms, and our rights. And I really, it was a great story put out on 605 Sports. I encourage everybody to go to 605 Sports on Facebook or Twitter. Also, go ahead and check out 605sports.com. Great new website covering all the different athletes around South Dakota. These five men featured by Rich Winter on 605 Sports for their sacrifice. The ultimate sacrifice is when you give, basically you give your life to the United States military to protect the freedoms of the Constitution, the freedoms that you enjoy every single day. So kudos and a tip of the hat to all those members for South Central. I was trying to pull it up here. I was going all the way back, and it's buried on 605 Sports on our social media on Facebook, but go get that read. It's a great read. Dylan Lamley on the mound, and we're going to have a change, excuse me, Dylan Lamley at the plate, and there's going to be a change on the mound. It's going to be Steiner. It's a pickup player from Dimmick Emery, is that correct? From Chamberlain. From Chamberlain. Yep. Evan Steiner. No record as far as his pitching. We know he's a 267 hitter. Steiner going to fall behind in the count 2-0. and oh. Interestingly, change here for South Central. Nobody in the bullpen, even after Patrick Starr tweaked that groin. We'll see if they try to roll with him as warm it is, is, as it is and limp through this game. Steiner's 2-0 delivery right down Broadway for strike one. 2-1 two and one the count. Tonight. We start the second round matchups, and it will be the Dimmick Emery Raptors and the Milbank Fire Chiefs at 5.30, starting the second round. Lamley with a rip to Jade Vanderwerf. That's an error. And there's going to be an error. 
E3. They're going to go E6. Ooh. It's going to be an error on the throw. For the Bethel, and Lamley aboard. Austin Ritchie. Austin Ritchie will step to the plate, taking a look. His first plate appearance, he was retired. He's 0 for 1 on the day. You know, I'm not sure Steiner has to uh, worry about the steal attempt here. <laughs> no, Dylan gave himself up. Dylan, he's been playing amateur ball for years. Those wheels, when he wants to turn them on, can still carry them. It's just a matter of getting them going. Getting them going. <laughs> it really is, Charlie. Austin Ritchie takes a look at ball one. Steiner, the lean lefty on the bump, will check Lamley. And they got Lamley on the move. Oh, he's safe. And Lamley's going to swipe second. <laughs> he just did exactly what I said he wasn't going to do. <laughs> he decided to turn him on, and I think it was more a matter of that. It was a good move by Steiner, the lefty. Caught Lamley leaning, and Lamley, instead of trying to break, those legs can't break. It's kind of like they those don't. pads are wore out. He just <laughs> opened it up, and he was hoping the bag would slow him down on the other end. Wow. Looks Steiner. like he's... Yeah, he's hurting. That's not what you want to see. A very, very important guy to a team where most people have these guys as a favorite to win it all. Oof. A lot of good teams in this tournament. They might be one of the favorites. But I've, we've seen so. Oh, he's going three. Steiner gave Lamley a long look after that pickoff attempt at first. You can tell he was a little frustrated. The pickoff move there will sail into center field over J.J. Beck's head, and that's going to allow Lamley to move up. Mm. Unfortunate sequence here for the storm. So with no outs, Austin Ritchie is going to step to the plate with a 1-0 count. He'll be looking for something to drive deep. So Lamley doesn't have to run home. <laughs> he can just tag and walk. This one will skip no. in, and Lamley's on the move. And <laughs> Faulkner can't locate the ball. And Lamley, with the most unlikely of scores, reaches on the air, reaches second on a failed pickoff attempt, takes third on an overthrow, an error over J.J. Beck's head, and then a pass ball will send him home. This will give me a chance to talk about coming to the plate or out to the mound to talk to his team right now is Coach Neil Hyla. And Neil has been a great story this year. He's been doing great things with the high school team for Gregory County, the amateur team, the Legion teams. Neil, just three weeks, not even three weeks. Yeah, it was three weeks before the regional final. He's known he's had a family history of heart problems, and he's monitored it forever. And three weeks out from regional play, he went into the hospital. He knew something was wrong, and he went in, and he had, I think, a quadruple bypass surgery and was back coaching his summer teams just five weeks later, two oh. weeks after the surgery. Neil Hyla, great for baseball in Gregory County. And that story needs to be uh, recognized. He's just an amazing man. That really goes to show the love of some people and, and what they do for their baseball club. That's really awesome and truly shows the respect and everything that he has for his club, his players, the people he looks to, his friends. It, it's awesome to see. And Hyla loves the game of baseball. He's got a stepson coming up by the name of Peck. You may have heard it out of Gregory County, a oh, yeah. great football player, wrestler, but the passion that those two have for baseball. For the Peck is just Ryland Peck. Brendan, you're going to hear and see great things out of him because of who his stepfather is and the coaching he's getting every day. You already have heard good things about him. I've heard <laughs> much about him wrestling-wise. I mean, he's a good athlete. He is. So Richie aboard. And Richie just under the tag. Might have gotten caught. Bang, bang call. I wouldn't have been disappointed had they 
called him out. I mean, it was that close. At the plate is Camerzal. Camerzal reached on an air in his first at bat. Steiner going to FedEx this one to the backstop, and Richie will move up to second on the wild pitch. No outs and runners on second and third right now. Nope, second. Third has come home. Oh, yeah, right. Third to second. Tough spot here for the Storm. They really need to bear down. You know you're going to have to score runs against the Winter Cologne Pheasants. You don't want to make these mental miscues. You want to keep it tight and give your sticks a chance at the plate to score with them. And right now, you know, I guess from what it looks like, South Central is not really pitching to them. They're just playing defense and not doing it to the extent that they want to. Steiner comes set. 2-0 the count here to cameras all the 418 hitter. Off-speed pitch can't catch a corner. It'll go 3-0. and Cameras all the eight hitter, the number nine hitter. Lakin Nagabauer is on deck. He's going to walk over and have a conversation with third base coach J.J. Farner. Good looking pitch by Steiner. Will dip below the knees, and that's a four pitch walk to Camerzel. Lakin Nagabauer, your center fielder, will come to the plate with no outs. Look for especially after that conversation, look for Nagabauer to possibly drop down a bunt. Coach Hyla going to call time. He's going to go to the bump, and don't be surprised if he pulls the trigger and goes to the lefty and right field, Blake Bowes. Blake Bowes is like a cat on a hot tin roof out there in center field right now, looking in and waiting for the call. You know, Gregory County qualified for their first for their first state tournament in high school baseball this year. He was he was the I mean, with a heart attack. I mean, or quadruple bypass. He coached them in that state tournament, and I can't remember if it was Del Rapids they had or Dakota Valley in the first round, but they gave up a lot of runs early. So we are going to have a pitching change. It won't be Bose. It's going to be a righty. And it's going to be number 12. It's going to be Brandon McKnight coming in from third base. We'll step away for one minute and we'll take a look at the final line on Steiner. Eklund Tax Service, located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at MenholeAuto.com. Menhol Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. The Gola Buffalo Casino at Lower Brule is proud of our area youth for their competitive spirit and participation in the various high school activities. It takes dedication and commitment to be the best you can be. It's all about sportsmanship and not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. The Gola Buffalo Casino is your winning destination for great food and more ways to win. More often, our youth, our future. We at the Gola Buffalo Casino say thanks for all you do. All right, we have all your defensive changes here for the South Central Storm in the bottom of the fourth. Brandon McKnight has come in to take on the pitching duties from Steiner. He was at third. He comes in to take over on the bump. Steiner will go to right field. So with Steiner in right field, Blake Boses went to left field. Jade Vanderwerf, who was the shortstop, will go to third. And Jaden Frank comes in from left field to take over the shortstop duties. And like you said, uh, tries to lay down a bunt. Yeah, Lakin definitely here. Uh, if you're the Pheasants, you're looking to put a little more distance, 
grow that lead. You're going to move these guys up with no outs. And you see the first baseman, Christofferson, way in within 10 feet, 15 feet of home plate. You know, Lakin looks like he has the speed to bunt. I mean, <laughs> he can get down that 90. Could about Reed Harder being shifty, Lake and Nagabauer can be described as a scooter. <laughs> yes, <laughs> All right, right on the money. Playing in left field, number two, Blake Bowes. So McKnight going to get the, excuse me, check swing called in his favor, and that'll be out number one. Lake and Nagabauer retired on strikes. And that'll bring Derek Gracer to the plate. The 400 hitter with runners on first and second. Taking a look at Gracer's body of work today. He is one for one. He had a check swing single to right field in his last at bat. Walked in his first at bat. Singled and scored in his last at bat. Richie moving down that line. Trying to get a lead. Looking, anticipating contact from Gracer. You know, watching McKnight so far, really over the top and fast. Mm -hmm. Cut on and miss for strike two by the Goose. Or excuse me, one and one count. Derek, uh, his family was honored with the first pitch today. Kevin Gracer, of course, the longtime amateur player and coach, passed away this spring in... I'll tell you, he had a game. He was the winning pitcher. He uh, won the game 10 to 2, but through seven and a third innings, he had a no hit shutout. Perfect game going, and it was on uh, his father's birthday. I thought we were going to have a kind of a Brett Favre moment, and it, it, it was for Derek, obviously. It was a special moment to see and, and record. 2-2 the count now. McKnight comes set. He'll kick home a fastball, and he's going to get the call. Strike three. Go Playing Picasso seven. on the inner half Go of the plate right for Jeff out Harris. number two. So now right fielder Jeff Harris will step to the plate, trying to continue this inning. Now remember... After that, that Lamley scored, they put the next two guys on, and they were trying to get Nakebauer to get that bunt down to move two guys up. They were thinking Anaconda squeezed the life out of the storm, and here McKnight has pitched the storm out of a jam, not quite out of it all the way. Switch over to uh, Winter Cologne here. Looking to them. You know, they pick up uh, Harris from Parkson, and so far he's played really well. Had a couple catches out there in right field and scored a few, but hey, he's playing really well, especially for a pickup player. You can't ask for much more. Jeff one for two on the day with an RBI. And that great catch, that one that he laid out vertically out in foul territory. This one he'll slap foul. Down the left field line. It's going to get out into the parking lot. And that looked, sounded like maybe your car. <laughs> I might have to go <laughs> check that out. <laughs> <laughs> Two one count. Jeff Harris takes a look at a fastball above the letters and inside. This is where Harris gets dangerous. When you get 3 1, this is going to be a hitter's pitch. McKnight needs to try coming even. He's got to come fastball and he comes change up nice looking change up out of McKnight fooled me and I think Harris also that'll fill this count up runners will be in motion three balls two strikes to Jeff Harris on the pitch this will skip away and get to the backstop that'll juice the bases McKnight and Faulkner having a conversation. Maybe a little mix up there. For the pheasants, Bases the loaded for Reed Harder. 417 hitter for the Pheasants. Call him the money man, Captain Chaos. State amateur tournament. Bases loaded, two outs in the fourth. 
You know, uh, before I forget, I would like to thank his mom, Sally Harder, <laughs> for the cookies. Uh, she brought everybody up here cookies. Uh, a big shout out to her and big thank you from us uh, from Sports Ticket Live. Faulkner's first pitch, great looking fastball right under the letters. Reed was <laughs> Reed had crowded the plate. He didn't like the call. There's, he's still asking if it was inside, outside. And you know, he as an umpire should know that. McKnight kicks home another fastball. This one on the outer half of the plate is going to be flared down that right field line for strike two. So Reed Harder down 0-2 in the count to Brandon McKnight. Boy, after everything that's happened this inning, the mental breakdowns, if the storm could come up with a strike or an out here, that'd be a huge morale booster. Knight takes a deep breath. Up to 0-2, do you think he challenges or do you think he tries to get him to chase? I think he gets him to chase here. I think Harder might go down strikes. Oh. Challenges him and it's going to be popped straight up. Faulkner coming to the net and can't oh. make the catch. McKnight was right behind him, nearly caught it off the ricochet. You seen that one in the bottom left-hand uh, part of your screen? It just came off the top end of his glove. He probably lost it up there in the, in the sun, but tough catch. Yeah, he's probably looking almost straight back into the sun now. Tough play for Faulkner. Good effort. So McKnight, 0-2 count, comes high heat, can't get him to chase. He wanted to. Yep, Reed doesn't quite pull the trigger there. Part of the battle at the plate is understanding what a pitcher, as a batter, you're, you're trying to figure out what a pitcher's thinking, going to do. He challenged him the first time. He was prepared for that, and then he was waiting to lay off something. This one, <laughs> that changeup that stays high in the strike zone, he does induce he knows what he likes. One and two the count. This has been a tough at bat. Yeah, counts one and two, and there have been what two, three foul balls. It's like the sixth, seventh pitch. Taking a look at McKnight's tally right now. And this is twenty third pitch already in relief. Nearly catches the corner. Kind of a changeup that will fall off the edge of the plate. Count will go two and two. We have Deuces Wild here in top of four. Reed Harder, the winner clone second baseman. Follow another one off. Good at back going here by Reed. Nice job by Knight. McKnight staying in there on the inner half of the plate, just banging away at that inner portion. So we'll do deuces wild for another time. Only appropriate. If you have two and two count with two outs, deuces wild, you have to do it twice. Reed will ground this to J.J. Beck, who will swallow it up. And he'll toss it over to first, and there's that morale booster. Christofferson collects the 4-3 put out. One run on no hits, two errors. They'll strand three. Your score is three to nothing as we go to the top of five. Storm looking to brew up a storm. When we think American made, we think quality and craftsmanship. That's why at Badlands Distillery, all of our spirits are made in-house one small batch at a time. We believe the best spirits start with the best ingredients, so we're proud that the Badlands Distillery lineup uses high quality, locally sourced ingredients. So the next time you enjoy the smooth taste of a Badlands Distillery spirit, you know you're drinking the best. Badlands Distillery, proudly American made. 
If you're hunting for a great deal on your next ride, get into Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pier. We're locked and loaded on all of our new and used inventory, like this 2018 Toyota Highlander, only $28,495. Looking for low price reliability? Try a 2011 Honda Accord for only $6,995. Who wants a loaded up truck? We have a 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 LTZ for only $17,995. Get to Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pier, 518 East Sioux Avenue. Call 605-224-7378 and visit Gateway F. FLT.com. We hope you are all enjoying the student productions of your school. Tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created, filmed, and produced by the students you love to follow and support. Become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor. It's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community. As a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Third baseman, Jade Vanderwerf, steps to the plate, and I just took a look at the line out there. Jade kind of had that happy birthday first hit of the game for yes. the Storm as it skipped to the right, or excuse me, the left, of Brandon Camerzel caught some of the... <laughs> The Hager Lime had to vent a rock in this field, and I can't believe Jocka would let a rock be in this field. Yeah. But that one, he rips down the first baseline. 1-1 one, one your count. This one will be chopped foul down the third baseline, and the count will go 1-2. and two. Now, if I'm the infield, I'm shifting left about three steps to everybody. Winner hardly will shift for any player. They'll play everybody Straight Pretty up. much straight up, unless it's Phil Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> one two is your count. Patrick Starr kicks it home. This one will be in the dirt. Count will go two and two. Jade Vanderwerf has now moved from shortstop to third base in all those pitching changes in that last half inning for the Greg or South Central Storm. I always want to say Gregory County too. This one popped up, and it's going to get into the stands. Actually, sounds like it might have. That one might have went off my car. Everybody's looking and laughing. <laughs> Can we get a color on the car? Yeah. <laughs> two two count. This one going to be waved at. Gracer will take it on a hop. Beautiful. And put it away. Bingo. In two out. For South Central. That'll be a 6-3 put out for the Pheasants. Jade Vanderwerf now one for two on the day. Blake Bowes got the start in right field, now playing left field. He'll step to the plate. Let's get his body of work. Blake right above that Mendoza line. He's at a 262 tick this year. For the storm, 0 for 1 today with a strikeout. The star going to fall behind in the count, 2 and 0. Star. Kicks and delivers, and Bows way up in the count, 3-0. Patrick moving mm, very methodically. There's the automatic, <laughs> called strike one. Shoney can still stroke. That outside portion of the plate for called strike. You know, you got to wonder uh, what happened. You know, we thought it was as growing as he walks him there, but he wanted one from the bullpen, or uh, at least from the dugout. Hadn't got one, but for South Central, the getting a little shaky. Bo's the third base runner of the game here today, this afternoon, for the South Central Storm. And that'll bring the pitcher, Brandon McKnight, to the plate in this eight spot. Gregory uh, South Central <laughs> going 8-9, looking to flip it over to the top of the order. 8-9, top of the order. 
Man aboard with one out, and that's Blake Bowes. McKnight going to shoot one past Derek Gracer. Hit and run was on, but they're able to limit that to a station to station as Austin Calhoun defensively was on the charge. For the star and the catcher, Chase Faulkner. Chase Faulkner. There's going to be a pinch hitter here for Faulkner. And this will be Miller. 44, Jay Winter. Jay Winter. Your attention, please. Now batting for the South Central Storm, number 44. Taking Jay a look at Winter. Jay Winter of Miller Wessington, 333 hitter on the season. So we've seen two of the three pickup players already for the South Central Storm Evan Steiner in right field. Now Jay Winter going to step in for Faulkner, the catcher. 333 average with one out. And runners on first and second, an opportunity for this young pickup player. Pickup players have had a great tournament. You think about Aaron Gronewig's contributions to Alexandria and that Alexandria Canova gang matchup. It was a 2 0 victory. He had an RBI and a solo home run, 2 0 pickup player. And you know, Jody, we talked about South Central needing hits. It could come right here from this pickup player and uh, really add on to that storyline. It's one of the beauties, the beautiful things of postseason play with amateur baseball. You can be eliminated, and if you've had a good season, you're going to get picked up. You're going to get an opportunity to help out one of your opponents, which is really weird. <laughs> Star falls behind in the count 1-0. Let's see if he can get even or if Winter... Winter will slap at this one. That'll even the count one and one. Everybody clap your hands. Come on, y'all. Winter in the nine spot, top of the order. And I want to double check. Yeah, that's Jaden Frank on deck for the storm, looking to cut into this 3 0 deficit. Winter delivers. It's going to be a solo shot or a single over the head of Derek Gracer. And Lakin Nagabauer will throw behind the runner as McKnight will move up to third. And they'll hold Winter to a single. The Storm are on the board. This will be Ryland Peck. Neil Hyla going to the Legion Pitch pickup running. player and his stepson, two, Ryland, Ryland Peck. Peck. But Winter delivers in his chance. It was a strike for the storm. It really was. I like that. And uh, like we said, continues that storyline for pickup for players storm, here in the State Amateur Baseball order. Tournament. It does. One out, runners on the corners. Good speed in Peck over at first. They're going to lay down the bunt. And Frank will see that one go foul. Jaden Frank, their leadoff hitter, a 507 hitter on the season. Good production from the top of the order. Coach Hyla rolls his signals over at third base. I look for Ryland to be on the move. Bakley bobbles the ball, and Peck will swipe second. Storm now have the tying run out at second base. You've got McKnight over on third, and Ryland Peck. And you know, Jody, That's there's it. only one out. I know. <laughs> they could bust this thing open right here if they really want to put an inning together. Cut on for strike two, one and two the count as Frank was out on that front foot. Big breaking ball there for Patrick Starr. One, two with one away, runners on second and third. Patrick Starr out of the full windup. Breaking ball and he induces the swing. And a big reaction out of Patrick Starr on the bump after that strikeout. One out to bingo. 
That'll put two in the books and coming to the plate is going to be number 32, Christian Swagger. Swagger, a 289 hitter on the season. And taking a look at today, he is 0 for 2. First pitch from Patrick Starr, breaking ball, grounded out to Camerzal. He's going to get the tag, and that's all he needs. Ryland Peck moving up the baseline with two outs. It's going to be tagged out. Storm, though, break the schneid. They're on the board with a run. We'll step away. We'll be back in 60 seconds with more of Game 16 action. Harry K. Ford is your only dealer who does $29.95 oil changes every day. Yep, that includes all the oil for the vehicle. Those other guys don't do that. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. Call Venture Communications today. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets in a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. We're halfway through this game 16 of the first round of amateur baseball in Mitchell, South Dakota. Pheasants see their lead chipped away at 3-1. They still lead the storm. Chandler Bakley going to turn on a first pitch and drive it to right field. McKnight comes with that fastball in the inner half and Bakley was waiting for it. It was a pitch that he looked like that he was hoping to get. Bakley will have a courtesy runner. This is Oscar Pravacek. Going to make his way across the diamond. At first base for Winter Cologne, number 44, one pitch, Pravacek. one hit, and you're back in business. And now coming to the, to the plate, Austin, Austin Calhoun. Calhoun. AC, as he's commonly known down in South Central South Dakota, head coach of the Winter Cologne High School baseball team, as Neil Hyla is also the head coach for Gregory County, the high school team. Nice looking pitch from McKnight. He'll paint the black for strike one. Jay Winter now catching, replacing Jace Faulkner. He had that clutch hit that drove in the first run of the game for the Storm. Wearing the bright orange singlet of Miller Wessington. Good story. Um, Steve Ellsworth honored today as the South Dakota Amateur Comeback Player of the Year. Steve Ellsworth, I had the chance to play on a state championship softball team with Steve. He was the catcher for that team. Um, we were Whitley distributing. We went out and we won a championship game 2-0. Steve, a great guy. It's good to see some of the guys that he has coached up over the years get a chance to play. And there's a single by AC into uh, right center. Steve Ellsworth, though, just always about baseball, softball. He loved summer sports. And Miller Light, or excuse me, Coors Light. <laughs> He'd be mad if I said Miller Light. <laughs> Dylan Lamley, the first baseman, steps to the plate. <laughs> you were going to say. You know, like I was talking about, uh, Miller Westington hasn't seen a state amateur baseball tournament in years. I'm not sure if they even have. In my recent memory, I've been to a lot of years of amateur baseball, but I don't remember seeing... Well. Dylan Lamley with a hit down the third baseline. He's really proven us wrong. He is. I mean, he punched that one deep, and it caught, it caught Jade Vanderwerf kind of sleeping over there at third. They didn't expect the bunt out of Dylan Lamley. And he shows his wheels and proves us wrong getting he does. up that first baseline. That's the fourth time today he's really moved along the base path. Now, what's really getting scary, you've just chipped away at the lead. It's 3-1. McKnight had a good close out in that bottom of the fourth but now here in the bottom of five you've got bases loaded with no outs 
you know, the storyline of this one so far is both teams leaving a lot of guys on base. They have. And let's see what Winter Cologne can do here, see if they can capitalize. But they're in a position to get some runs in. Austin Ritchie, the AR-16 at the plate, he would love nothing more than to uh, put a notch on his belt and that being a grand slam in the state amateur tournament. He's hit a lot of home runs in his career. He played college baseball for Sioux Falls College, or excuse me, the University of Sioux Falls. Got to play some semi-pro a couple seasons back down in Colorado. And here today he has bases loaded, 0-2 count. High heat won't induce the swing. One and two the count. McKnight, full inning pitched. Has himself a jam to work out of. This one will stay high and inside. The slow breaking ball caused Austin to kind of flinch there. <laughs> you know, it's a unique look from Austin, too. He's got them sunglasses on. I mean, he's just out there. It looks like he's having a great time. Every time he steps in the box, he goes through the same exact... <laughs> it's slow. <laughs> But watch him. He's, he's going to talk to his bat, much like Major League. You remember the, the big cleanup hitter? Oh, yeah. He says something about Joe Boo, and then he steps in. <laughs> this count is filled up. Payoff pitch is on the way. Really methodical. Taking his time. There, there he does it. Yep. Talks to the bat. McKnight's biggest pitch of the game. Oh, Ooh. and he does good friend of mine always told me if you're going to walk them, you might as well hit them. Right. And McKnight does just that. That's an RBI for Austin Ritchie. You get a run batted in on a hit hit batman or a base on balls in that situation. So Neil Hyla going to come to the mound and it's, it's got to be just a matter of time before he calls the lefty out of left field in. They're trying to save him but there is no tomorrow. And there is going to be a pitching change. McKnight heading over towards third. Looks like J.J. Beck going to get the call. Vanderwerf will go back to short. And Frank will go to second base. We'll step away 60 seconds after these warm-up pitches and make sure we got it correct. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at MenholtAuto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. At Ashley Home Store, when we say we got it, we really mean it. We've got all the popular styles for every room in your home, as well as some of the highest quality and customer ratings in the industry. Not to mention, we've also got the top mattress brands like Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley Sleep. And payroll deduction financing available so you can take time to pay. So come in today and see why your Pierre Ashley Home Store is the top choice for everything home. Hurry in. We're located on South Garfield Avenue in Pierre. This is home. Welcome back to Mitchell, South Dakota. This is the final game of the first round. The winner of this game will play the Salem Cubs in the second round matchup. Defensive change, it will be J.J. Beck coming in from second base to take on the pitching duties. McKnight will return to third. Vanderwerf will move from third to shortstop. And Frank, who is at short, will go to second base. Now, we've talked about military appreciation and how I love how they do that here in Mitchell, South Dakota during the state am. J.J. Beck, one of those young men that give, has given his service to the United Brandon States Cameron Army Bell. National Guard. Um, J.J., one of those incredible wrestler, football player, but what a lot of people don't understand about J.J. Beck, one of the best golfers in South Dakota. Really? Yes. Wow. He's going to get his spot here at the state am on the bump going to get a chance to shine. He's going to step into a difficult situation. Hot shot down the first base line. It's going to bounce off the first baseman, and Beck will recover 
or pick up Christofferson as he saw that ricochet out of the webbing of his glove. Beck, it's going to go 3 1 3 officially, the score. And uh, Calhoun will score to make your tally 5 to 1. Lamley moves up to third and Richie to second. Lakin Nagabauer will step to the plate, the number nine hitter and center fielder for the Pheasants. Beck with a nice fastball will get the call. 0 1. JJ just reached and dealed. Just missing count lead up, even up one and one. Nagabauer officially 0 for 2 on the day with a strikeout. And Lakin, a 184 hitter on the season. Two and one the count here to Lakin. Fastball will be off the edge of the plate. Count will go 3 1. JJ needs to gather himself and get even right here with a good fastball. And he'll miss to load the bases on a base on balls. So Derek Gracer will step to the plate, the leadoff hitter in a shortstop for the Pheasants. He's one for two today, has drove in a run, walked, and struck out to McKnight. Former winner Cologne, the top of the order, and shortstop Derek Gracer. First pitch offering, a fastball off the edge of the plate. And J.J. has fallen behind in this count, 1-0. This fastball going to be deep behind second base, and it's the right fielder, Steiner, who's going to come in the plate at the plate. And Lamley, showing his wheels, will slide around the take attempt by Winter to make your score 6-1. to one. I didn't even see the tag. I wasn't even thinking about the tag because I didn't think Lee would pursue it. They must have seen something there because right away he was on it. He was ready to go. So there are two outs here for the Storm. The runners have moved up to second and third, and that's Richie at third, and Lake and Nagabauer good wheels out at second, and Jeff Harris steps up to the plate. Jeff one for two on the day. He also has an RBI. They appeal to third, and the there's going to be a no call. Oh, they called it safe. Okay, I got you. I didn't see him go to home. Beck's first pitch fastball. Beck's first pitch fastball will miss for ball one. Comes inside, Harris will turn on it. Frank traps it and flips it to one for a 4-3 put out. But Winter Clome comes up with another three runs. On three hits, there were no errors, and they strand two. Your score is six to one as we go to the top of six. Right now is a great time to be planning for the next growing season. Fall fertilizer application can give your crops a strong start in the spring. Because the nutrients available and needed in each field vary, your Actegra agronomist can help determine your specific nutrient needs and the benefits of applying them now. To optimize your inputs for next year's crop, contact your Actegra agronomist for details or visit actegra.com today. Harry K. Ford, your go-to dealer for transparency and the lowest prices. From sales to service, we pride ourselves on transparency and low prices. It's who we are every day. Family, friends, and Fords, in that order. We've got a history of serving you. A history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank, member FDIC. 
First Class Banking on a First Name Basis. South Central Storm pitcher J.J. Beck steps to the plate and will take a ball inside. Patrick Starr still on the bump for the winter clone pheasants even after tweaking that groin back in the third inning. So far he's been able to limit the Storm to one run on four hits. But hasn't been starting on top of these pitchers like we saw earlier. There's a swing and a miss for strike one. Counts one and one. With J.J. back at the plate. J.J. J.J., the number three hitter. The Storm going to go three, four, five in their lineup. So this spot, big spot in the game where they need production out of that middle of the order. Beck one for two. He had that excuse me swing single to right field back in. It was probably the fourth inning as he scored the run. This one popped up. Reed Harder ranging over, shielding the eyes, and makes the catch in shallow right field on an F4 put out. Attention, please. Now batting for the South Central Storm and playing right field, number 12, Evan Steiner. Well, Evan Steiner is going to step to the plate. He will be their four hitter, the pickup player for the Chamberlain Mallards. Steiner, a hitter right above that Mendoza line at 267. Got some uh, interesting information on Steiner. He pitched uh, with Mount Marty. I guess Derek Denning, uh, a teammate of him, got this information from Derek. He's a couple years younger than Derek, he said, but he's from Spearfish and uh, a teammate of his. He says he's a good player, so interesting. A college pitcher goes out there, and uh, they pull him in the second, I believe, the second or third. Good info coming from the Stangs bullpen. <laughs> High heat from Star will miss. Count is, what, 1-0. 2-0 as the scoreboard updates here. Two zero will stay above the letters. And Patrick Starr looking like he's laboring. A shake of the head, shoulders. Not comfortable, but looking to go out and finish. 3-0 is going to be kicked home, and that's going to be ball four. Steiner will be aboard on base on balls. And that'll bring the number five hitter in this lineup, Cole Christofferson, to the plate. The first baseman, Cole Christofferson. Cole, 0 for 2 today. You know, we've talked a lot about Star. Let's take a look at kind of his body of work. He's throwing 69 pitches. 47 of those for strikes, faced 22 batters, started 15 of those 22 out with a first pitch strike. We'll make it 15 for 23 now as this one dips below the knees for ball one. How many has he walked? Patrick has issued three, two oh, base on balls oh. now. Not bad. Not a lot of free passes out of him. He's given his defense a chance behind him. Steiner looks, looks kind of like he was just tense. I thought he was on the move. <laughs> Relatively good lead as I looked over there. Star kicks it home. Off speed changeup will miss upstairs. Count will go two and one. Steiner getting a pretty big lead over there at first. If he takes off, you guys will see it in the top right of your screen. But, uh, Big lead. They've only had one attempt on Bakley today, and it was one that he bobbled. He's got good arm. This one driven to right center. Lake and Nagabauer chasing, and he will not get there. Goes to the ground, and I think they'll rule that a hit. We'll see. So that is going to be a double there for Christofferson. Jade Vanderwerf, the shortstop, the storm, will step to the plate. He's one for two on the day. And again, another big spot here for the Storm. Trailing six to one. They have runners on second and third with one away. And we've seen Jade. He likes to turn on Patrick Starr. He likes those off-speed pitches. Likes to step out and just rip him down that third baseline. 
Big cut for strike one. Star on top now, 16th of 24 batters. He's got on top of with a first pitch strike. Throwing about 70% clip, four strikes right now. This one will skip away. Bakley doing a nice job behind the plate. It, I've been listening to all the different announcers during the course of this tournament. Clint Greenway. Um, we have Dale, you had Heath. Um, they're all talking about the catcher play in this tournament. It's been phenomenal. It has. Not many pass balls, but that's how you get to this tournament. You have to have good catcher play. You know, when you don't, it advances runners, yeah. uh, possible scoring from uh, a steal at home, but that's how they get to this tournament. One and two as Jade Vanderwerf does turn on one down that left field line. Great job by Charlie Provacek flipping it to one of the kids down there. One, two, catches the corner. Patrick Starr playing Picasso. And Patrick's happy. <laughs> Showing a lot of emotion out there on the bump. Going to collect his fifth strikeout. That'll bring Blake Bowes, the left fielder, to the plate. Bowes, with two outs, has an opportunity for the Storm to chip away at this lead. The first pitch off the edge of the plate. So 16 out of 25, you're talking about 64% of the batters he's faced. Two, two out of every three starts out on top. That's wild. This one misses away. 1-0 account to Blake Bowes. Showing a lot of respect, staying away. 2-0 and now the count. You talked about the scouting report. These teams call around, they get information, kind of like you just pulled out of the, the bullpen. They know the tendencies of these players. And, of course, these two played back on May 11th. They're pitching bows away. Because if you pitch him, like, inside, bows will deliver. Play at the plate, and he's safe. Great slide there at the plate. Cole Christofferson slides inside the plate. Bakley falls onto his haunches, tries to make the tag, and Blake Bowes on that inside fastball turns and delivers to right center. Jeff Harris with a nice throw to the plate, just a tad behind. And that'll be a two RBI single, and Bowes will take second on the throw. But I tell you what, there's a reason was th that Star was pitching outside there. There is. They, they have scouting reports. They know these guys. Coming to the plate now is going to be number 12, Brandon McKnight, the number eight hitter. And remember, he's a 400 hitter. Still has a man out at second base in scoring position. He'll turn on one, flare it down the third baseline. And it'll drift foul. Counts 0-1 on that long strike for Patrick Starr. South Central now with three runs on six hits. Winter Clone with six runs on four hits. South Central out hitting the Pheasants today. Good looking fastball and it's ripped and McKnight will lean towards third base and catch it on the run for the F5 put out. Two runs on one hit for the Storm have cut that lead in half. It's 6-3. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Feel more confident and in control of your financial life. Ameriprise Advisors can work with you to provide personalized, goal-based advice based on your short and long-term goals. Plus, you can track your investments and financial solutions with our digital tools and regular meetings. Call John Pokup at 1-800-713-9160 to see the multiple ways they can help you on your retirement journey. Legacy Financial Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, is located at 218 South Monroe Street in Winter, South Dakota. Member FINRA and SIPC. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at MenholtAuto.com. Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. 
All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. Welcome back to Cadwell Park, one of the fun electric environments in the state. And it always happens at the South Dakota Amateur Tournament. We've talked a lot about military recognition, some other great things that are happening in addition to all the camaraderie. You got bingo, you got half and half drawings. Uh, you have the sponsor of the day, the Mitchell Corn Palace today, giving away featured event tickets all day long along with popcorn balls. And just <laughs> fun environment. Leading off the bottom of the sixth inning, four winner Cologne. Well, Second when you see a team just chip Harvard. your lead in half, who do you want coming to the plate? Uh, this guy or his brother who's <laughs> yeah. not here today. but uh. Yeah, Zach coaching today up in Clark, South Dakota for the 16U VFW State Tournament. Did they, they, d they did get the win. They uh, got nine to three, I believe, is your final score. Over Florence Henry, MVP yes. gets fifth place. Yes, I believe so. So this is Reed Harder. <laughs> Takes a look at a curveball below the knees, and that'll make the count two and zero. Oh. JJ Beck in in relief. JJ will wind and deal fastball at the letters. Plays Picasso, paints the black. Are there three winners, Jody? There are three bingo oh winners. <laughs> That's the first time I've seen that. I've seen two, not three. Next pitch by J.J. Beck in the dirt. Count will go three and one to Reed Harder. You don't want to put Reed on the base paths. Good speed, great quickness, and he's chaotic. He likes to make things happen, and that's just what happens J.J. Beck will issue a base on balls to Reed Harder on five pitches. The number three hitters aboard and look for Reed to be on the move early in this count to move up into scoring position for Chandler Bakley, the cleanup hitter. Bakley, a 413 hitter on the season. Oh, just above the letters. That one could have went either way. J.J. Beck will start behind in the count. 1-0 to Chandler Bakley. Just want to remind everybody. Yeah, there he goes. I was going to say, Reed's going to steal. Oh, well, it's going to be a foul ball. I thought Winter just dropped it, and they're going to send Reed Harder back. Like I was going to say, Reed's going to steal. Watch your uh, top right of your screen, and there he left, so... One one count. Winner Cologne will work to get Reed into scoring position. Bakley rips that one down the right field line. It's tailing, gonna go foul, and what an effort by Steiner in right field. Trying to duplicate the effort of the pickup player for winner Cologne, Jeff Harris. He laid out vertical and just couldn't quite come up with it. <laughs> Tell you what though. Reed Harder is running wind sprints out here. <laughs> <laughs> and he loves it. Yes, he does. Sally, his mom who cooked the cookies earlier, she's U.S. Furman, their father. They yep. will tell you that she's the reason these kids are so competitive. <laughs> yeah, so I've heard. You know, Bakley that. turns on one. This one's going to be inside that third base bag down the left field line. And Reed not going to try to go to third. Rounded second. Big round, long rounding turn. And he actually falls on his boot, booty. And he's got to go back to second. Oscar Pravacek will come in and courtesy, courtesy run again. At first base for Winter Cologne, so after surrendering Oscar two runs, Pravacek. here come the Winter Cologne Pheasants. Mounting a little bit of a, a big inning, a start of a big inning with back to back singles. No, a base on ball and a single. And the man who led the state class B in RBIs, Austin Calhoun, will be coming to the plate. You're not going to see a bunt here. There's going to be a pitching change. We're going to get the defensive changes here in a second. Back in 60. Shop local with Burke and Gregory Building Centers, your hometown hardware stores, specializing in everything from finding the right drill bit to building your dream home. The crew at Burke and Gregory Building Centers take pride in customer service and are always available to help with any project, big or small. They offer top-of-the-line flooring and cabinetry, a large inventory of rental items, quality Pittsburgh paint, and so much more. 
Follow them on Facebook and shop online anytime at bgbillingcenter.com. Join the team and take on your legacy. Since 1862, the South Dakota Army National Guard has been ready to defend our freedom and our way of life. When our nation calls, we are there to help our friends, neighbors, and communities in the event of forest fires, floods, tornadoes, and severe winter storms right here in South Dakota. Now we want you to write the next chapter in our rich history of the South Dakota Army National Guard. Visit their Facebook and Instagram pages or nationalguard.com sd. Limestone canyons, flowing waterfalls, and pristine beauty make Spearfish a sanctuary for those seeking the ultimate escape. Outdoor enthusiasts will find top-notch sport climbing, mountain biking, and UTV OHV trails. Guests are steps away from peaceful hiking trails and tranquil streams. Relax and rehash your day's adventure at one of our award-winning local breweries. Finding rest is an important part of any adventure. Lodging in Spearfish comes with a variety of choices, from cabins, B&Bs, and campgrounds to the comforts of your popular brand-name hotels. To find your unique adventure in Spearfish, go to visit Spearfish.com. Calm now. We're a little over halfway home in this final game of the first round, the game 16, and there's going to be a defensive change. It is Paul Taggart coming off the bench to take over the pitching duties. Paul Taggart, 2-2 two and two on the year for the Storm. Eric Steiner will be replaced in the lineup by Taggart as J.J. Beck will go to second base, and now Jaden Frank goes from second base to right field. You want to hear about Jaden Frank's day, and you want to talk about a utility player? He started in left field, goes to shortstop, comes into pitch, now goes to second, now to right field. He's made a big V out there on the diamond. Yes, he has. Austin yes. Calhoun. Steps to the plate, taking a look. Austin's having himself a decent day. One for three and has scored a run. But his forte, he comes to life with runners on the base paths. He's got Reed Harder out at second and Oscar Pravacek, the courtesy runner over at first. He's got a 2-0 count, and this is where AC looks to pull the trigger and swing huge. Does that and flares it to left field. Well played by Bowes. Bose had that one measured, and AC about played perfectly for the F7 put out. For the peasants, the first one pitch, in the mud, Dylan Lamley. Dylan Lamley might be the your player of the game for sure. No kidding. <laughs> He's done so much on the base path so far today, it'd be hard not to give him the player of the game. And guess what? Dylan's 0 for 3 on the day, but That's he's crazy. all over the base paths. Oh, yeah. Reaches on errors. Unfortunately, South Central with four errors, it seems like they always involve Dylan Lamley. Cut and a miss for strike one. Taggart starts up top, on top. Now, Dylan Lamley is from Burke, South Dakota, and, and South Central is made up of Gregory and Burke players. Reed Harder on the move, and will slide under the tag attempt of McKnight. Winter with a nice gun. Oscar Pravacek heads up base running, moving up on the throw to third from first to second. So there's a pair in scoring position for Dylan Lamley. I'm guessing Dylan has faced Paul Taggart a few times in his career. South Central made up of Gregory and Burke players. Lamley actually retired on strikes, excuse me, behind my count. That'll be Four winner Cologne, the two outs. Hitter, Austin that was very undramatic. It very was. It was. <laughs> he just kind of was like, okay. And now the AR-16 will step to the plate and go there through the routine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Taggart, that short delivery really keeps a tight delivery comes almost three quarter good good velocity on that fastball it's going to paint it for strike one this one stays inside and if you remember austin in his last at bat count full filled up and he got plunked right after yes, that he beat. <laughs> yes he did austin gets hit a lot that's why he wears that elbow protector well, he's a larger target. 
Austin going to flip this one down the first base line, and I think it's going to get out of play for strike two. You know, one and two. You know, there's 32 teams that make the state amateur baseball tournament every year, and Winter Cologne is lucky to be one of those 32 teams basically year in, year out. But it's just crazy to see the players like uh, Austin Ritchie and Calhoun come in and be guys that are consistent year in and year out. It's, it's fun to watch. I love watching these two. Uh, two of my favorite players to watch. This one will skip into the left-handed batter's box for ball two, and we have Deuces Wild. You know, Winter Cologne has seen their season end the last three years in the state semifinals to the Alexandria Angels. I don't think that'll happen. It can happen this year. <laughs> They're on opposite sides of the bracket for the first time in like five years. Richie will take a look at ball three, and this count has worked its way full. Runners will be in. Nope. No, no runner on first. I was going to say they're going to be in motion. Austin going to flare that out towards J.J. Beck. He'll look into the sun and collect it. And they will end the inning. So the Storm score two runs in the top half of the sixth. And they get out of a jam in the bottom of the sixth. This just has a strange feeling going on. Patrick Starr to return to the bump in 60 seconds. We'll return with him. At Monument Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, we are here to help you make your comeback. Our team is standing by to diagnose and treat your injury with some of the most advanced treatment options available and same-day appointments. Monument Health practitioners work closely with our therapists and physicians in communities throughout the Black Hills with locations in Rapid City and Spearfish. Visit monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. That's monument.health slash orthopedics for more information. Now is the time to save at Grossenberg Implement on Hydraulic Cylinders. Do you have an older one that you've been fighting for a while or continually or continuously adding hydraulic oil to? Then stop in this week and save 8% on all hydraulic cylinders only at Grossenberg Implement. Not sure you want to tackle the job to replace it? Grossenberg can do that too. Stop in today and see how Grossenberg can help you. Grossenberg Implement, service to the ag community since 1937. Welcome back to Cadwell Park in Mitchell, Thank South Dakota. South Central the, South the South Central Pacific. Storm are going to send Jay Winter, the catcher, to the plate. Jay has got the only RBI of the day. He's one for one. He drove in, I believe it was Blake Bowes. Let's take a look at who scored that run. Actually, no. They've got more runs than that. They've got three, but Bowes was the first runner to score. Winter takes a look at a cold strike. It's 0-1 to Jay Winter of Miller Wessington. Love these jerseys. I don't care what anybody says, bright orange. Whew, looks sharp on a baseball uniform. We saw the Colt 45s wear them yesterday. You'll see the MVP Mustangs wear them at some point possibly in this yeah. tournament. From, from a they're little stick inside, gray? Yeah, a little inside <laughs> information. They're going grays. <laughs> I heard Briggs Havlick would not be very happy if they go to the oranges. Jeff Harris is going to collect that Jay Winter Fly ball to right field for out number one. Harris showing wheels. You know, Jay fits in well as a pickup player with this team. Really You've does. talked about Winter Clone being here. Well, these guys are getting up into their early 30s, early to mid 30s, and I'm guessing Jeff as an amateur, probably maybe even older. I'll see if I can get a little tidbit. There's going to be a single. For South Central, the center fielder, Christian Schweiger. Yeah, that was Jaden Frank. He's now one for four on the day. Takes a look at a first pitch strike. And he'll send it sailing between the Goose and Brendan Camerzal at short and third for a base hit. So South Central with their seventh hit of the day. And that brings Christian Schweiger, the center fielder, to the plate. And takes a look at one in the dirt. Schweiger showed bunt. And Jody, there's one in scoring position. There is. <laughs> there is, just like that. Frank showing good wheels. Got up the line quickly. Counts 1-0. Oh. 
Star comes set, checks the runner. This one going to be chopped harmlessly foul behind the plate. Patrick up on top in the count. One and one the count, actually. No Al Bidet. Yeah, no Al Bidet. Al. Yeah, Al was here earlier. I don't know. He must just be taking a break. Very well could. Patrick comes set. Star kicks, delivers, takes a lot off that one. And it's going to be sent into the tree over here on the right field in right field foul territory. Some young lady just got herself a souvenir. She's And that ecstatic. made her die. Yeah, it did. One and two the count. Schweiger 0 for 3, looking to break into the hit column. Schweiger will call time. It's a late time. No multiple hits out of any of these storm batters, but you got Frank with a hit, Beck with a hit, Christofferson with a hit, Vanderwerf, Bose, McKnight, and Winter. Seven of them on the day. And this one, and excuse me, pop up Patrick Starr showing that the groin, hip, whatever it is, is okay. He'll range off the mound to collect it for an F1 put out. Second baseman, J.J. Beck. J.J. Beck. Looking to become the first multiple hit player for the Storm. It's one for three on the day. We'll if step he, to the dish. If he does connect, there is one in scoring position. You would likely see a run score. Patrick now at 90 pitches. 91st pitch is cut on for strike one. Of those 90 pitches, 62 of them for strikes. Just below that 70% clip. 20 of 30 batters, first pitch strikes. Wow. 67% clip. Patrick with a good outing on the mound. This one going to be tapped up towards Lamley. Shields his eyes, finds it, locates it for the F3 put out in Four foul territory. In South Central inning. will come up with no, no run, runs one on no one hit. hit. No airs, and they'll strand a man. 6-3, we go to the home half of the seventh. Home, or wait, it's stretch time. I'm not singing it. Let's get out of here for 60. Let's all rise. This is Jason with Dakota Carpet Restoration. No job is too small or too big. Leaked water from frozen pipes, sump pump failures, or a flooded basement? We can help. If your house is underwater, no problem. Call us right away. Even if it's 3 in the morning, we'll take care of the water damage before mold sets in. Dakota Carpet Restoration, 481-8709. The clean you expect, the service you deserve. Eklund Tax Service, located at 323 Main Street in Gregory, South Dakota, is available for all your tax preparations. Mark Eklund has been a staple in the Gregory community for many years and wants to help you and your business have success by specializing in all types of bookkeeping. Eklund Tax can take care of any agricultural, retail, or personal bookkeeping or tax preparation. Call Mark at Eklund Tax today at 605-835-9665. Are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle? Whether you're looking for a car, truck, or SUV, shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholeauto.com. Menhol Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. We go to the bottom of seven. It's six three, and the Pheasants will send Brendan Camerzel to the plate. Camerzel one for three, or excuse me, zero for two on the day. He has walked and scored, and actually drove in a run on that walk also for an RBI. Camerzel, the number eight hitter. Pheasants go eight nine, top of the order. Paul Taggart on the mound in relief, taking a look. South Central has went to five different pitchers. Taggart with one inning of relief at this point. 
going to try closing things out. They'd like not to have to go to another pitcher. He's going to fall behind in the count. Three and one the count to Brandon Kamerzal. Watch Taggart. He puts the ball almost behind his back. He does. In that is such a, a short motion it is. when he comes over the top with it. It's hard to pick up. Kamerzel takes a look at a called strike two. That'll fill up this count. Three balls, two strikes. Is it a momentum builder when he comes back and then over the top? Or Absolutely. You get that arm whip. Kamerzel will take a look at one in the dirt and draw a base on balls. So you got your leadoff hitter aboard, Lake and Nagabauer, who we talked about. 189 hitter. He's below the Mendoza line. His biggest threat is his speed at the plate. Again, look for the corner or third base to move up on the edge of the grass and be looking for that bunt. Lakin will pull the bat back as he does offer a bunt attempt. Counts 1-0. and And that'll get McKnight up into the grass now. Taggart going to miss off the edge of the plate for ball two. Now, when I was playing baseball, if somebody squared and we were on the bump, we were told to throw at their head. Really? Yep. Because they protect themselves and you get the called strike. Good bunt down that first base line. Taggart shows good wheels off the bump. And Camerzel, had he had speed, Brendan not a slow runner, but there was nobody covering third, and you don't want to take and flip a coin. Your whole idea there is to get the runner to second with one out in scoring position. But McKnight charging for that bunt. There was no coverage of third from the shortstop. McKnight retreating quickly. Now you've got... Your leadoff hitter coming to the plate and Derek Gracer with a runner in scoring position. Gracer one for three. That's out. No. And Gracer drives one and it's dropped. That's going to be an E8. No damage done as Camerzel would had pulled up to tag. The order for winner Cologne was the shortstop Derek Gracer. That one really died extremely fast. Yeah, I, I didn't see it off the bat. I was looking for it and you said it was gone. I thought so. <laughs> most parks it might have been out in center field that was an error by Schwagert E8 that would be the fifth error of the day for the storm Jeff Harris will now step to the dish with runners on first and second and one away Taggart looking for a pitcher's best friend a ground ball instead he's going to pop up Harris Vanderwerf ranging over and he almost sees that one pop out of the webbing that's good for the second out on the F6. F6 put out for out number two. Now Reed Harder, Captain Chaos, his nickname, will step to the plate and Reed today 0 for 2. But Taggart Doing a nice job after seeing those opening runners get on. Trying to get out of a jam, and he might have just done it with another pop-up. Schweigert digging in from center, and he redeems himself with that put out just behind second base, and he kisses his glove. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nice job by Schweigert for the F8 put out. No runs on one hit. They'll strand two. We go to top of eight. 6-3, this is still anybody's game. We'll be back in 60 seconds. The Gola Buffalo Casino at Lower Brule is proud of our area youth for their competitive spirit and participation in the various high school activities. It takes dedication and commitment to be the best you can be. It's all about sportsmanship and not whether you win or lose, but how you play the game. The Gola Buffalo Casino is your winning destination for great food and more ways to win. More often, our youth, our future. We at the Gola Buffalo Casino say thanks for all you do. When we think American-made, we think quality and craftsmanship. That's why at Badlands Distillery, all of our spirits are made in-house, one small batch at a time. 
We believe the best spirits start with the best ingredients, so we're proud that the Badlands Distillery lineup uses high quality, locally sourced ingredients. So the next time you enjoy the smooth taste of a Badlands Distillery spirit, you know you're drinking the best. Badlands Distillery, proudly American made. The South Central Storm season is down to possibly their final six outs. They trail six to three to the winner, Clone Pheasants. They're going to start things off 21 with number 21, Paul Taggart, the pitcher. Paul, this will be his first official at bat in this game, a 400 hitter on the season for the Storm. He's going to take a look at ball one in the dirt. Paul would no love nothing more than to help his cause right here. Star second pitch, off speed, above the letters. And Paul Taggart will be looking at a 2-0 hitter's count. The 2-0 delivery is kicked home. It's a breaking ball. It's going to stay high in the strike zone. So if you're the storm, this is exactly what you want. Get that leadoff man aboard. Not used to seeing Star fall behind like this. Yeah, we've not. I think maybe the second time we've seen a 3 0 count out of Patrick Star, and that one's going to catch the corner. Finds it. 3 1 count. Star has went seven complete innings, surrendered three earned runs on seven hits, walked two, and struck out five. Another good looking fastball right down Broadway there. Belt high fastball will fill up this count. Three balls, two strikes. The payoff pitch will stay high in the strike zone. We're just thinking we've seen so many pitchers in this first round fall behind 3 0 in the count. They get that first strike, the second one, the then they lose them. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a loss of control or a mind game. Oh, they're pulling him. Great day for Patrick Starr. Seven complete innings. We don't have his final line yet. We'll get that here. It's going to be Reed Harder in relief. J.J. Farner will go to second. That's probably how this is going to go. We'll step away. We'll catch the changes. We'll be back in 60 seconds. If you're hunting for a great deal on your next ride, get into Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pier. We're locked and loaded on all of our new and used inventory, like this 2018 Toyota Highlander, only $28,495. Looking for low price reliability? Try a 2011 Honda Accord for only $6,995. Who wants a loaded up truck? We have a 2014 Chevy Silverado 1500 LTZ for only $17,995. Get to Gateway Ford Lincoln Toyota in Pier, 518 East Sioux Avenue. Call 605-224-7378 and visit Gateway F lt.com we hope you are all enjoying the student productions of your school tonight's event and every event produced by your school during the school year are created filmed and produced by the students you love to follow and support become a booster of your school's live event coverage by becoming a sponsor it's a great way to show your support of the athletes and students in your community as a sponsor, you'll get great visibility for your business, organization, or family by supporting the live productions of your school. Welcome back to Cadwell Park in Mitchell, South Dakota. This is the 2021 South Dakota Amateur Baseball Association State Tournament. And I want to remind everybody, a week ago, we had what was the first ever selection show where we transparently drew out the bracket for this state tournament. But also at that time, we dubbed the state tournament August Agony. And you know, Jody, I think that's something that might take off. People are starting to, to refer to it as this, and let's hope it makes a program next year. Now, if you ask the Clark Traders if it's August Agony, they say definitely it is. Now, the Plankington f and Bakers, who had the two-run walk-off home run, think, nah, there's nothing to this thing. Not yet. You know? <laughs> no, they, uh, they haven't seen the Fire Chiefs yet. This is kind of got the feel of something you, you've seen the South Central Storm get out of some really bad spots and now you've forced the starter Patrick Starr the big lefty who was injured off the mound and they got to go to Reed Harder in relief. Reed has got quite a body of work in relief this year 
as far as an overall record, he's 1-0, but he's got several saves. First offering here to Christofferson is going to be inside for ball one. If Reed, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, like six or seven saves on the season for the Pheasants. I remember him pitching last year in the State Amateur Baseball Tournament. Uh, so he has some experience here, nothing new to him. Nothing new. Reed likes pressure situations. And Reed's one of those kids that wants the ball when it's clutch time. He doesn't want to see it in somebody else's. He wants to control the entire team's destiny. Yep. And I think he'll do an excellent job. Last year he faced some pretty good ball clubs and did really well. So I think he'll have no problem here against the, the Storm, but we'll see. Storm proving that they want to. I mean, they've they just survived some real ugly situations. And they're still in this game. The winning run or tying run is on deck. Christofferson going to chase the high heat for out number one. Taggart over on first base. And that will bring Jade Vanderwerf to the plate. The We've seen the Jade with Jade some Vanderwerf. huge cuts today. He's one for three on the day, but everything he's ripping away at has gotten down that third base line. He's definitely a pull hitter. Let's see if Winter chooses to roll it up for the pull. They're going to play him straight away. Winter Clone going to play this straight up. Jade on the season. A 281 hitter. Big cut. Nose was down on the ball. Just behind that fastball from Reed Harder. 0 and 1 the count. Reed also a Dakota Wesleyan baseball player. Yes, he was. I think he's done now, right? I don't know if he's got that oh, he COVID might, he might red shirt. Left. Vanderwerf does rip it down the left field line. It's going to be good for a single. Austin Calhoun will quickly get over and limit that to a single. But Vanderwerf pulling the ball, seeing the ball well here in today's game. Blake Bowes had the two RBI single in his last at bat, and he's going to step to the plate. His body of work today, one for two. He scored a run, drove in two, walked and struck out. So there is one in scoring position, but uh, a double would, I'm pretty sure, score two. <laughs> You'd love to see an extra base hit right now if you were a South Central Storm fan. Crowd suddenly quiet. Yeah. It's got tense in here. And I will note, there is quite a few people here for it being 4.05 on a Sunday. Cut and a miss for strike one. Count evens. A ball and a strike. Some people wearing Dallas, South Dakota hats here in the crowd today. <laughs> Representing the South Central Storm business sector. Reed will step off the rubber. Bows out of the box. Counts one and one. Everybody's going to reset. It's Taggart out at second. Vanderwerf on first. Reed Harder will collect that bunt by Bows, but he does his job. It's a sacrifice bunt. Moving Taggart up to third and Vanderwerf up to second. And there's one away for McKnight, the number eight hitter, who swings the bat at a 400 clip for the South Central Storm. Maybe this is why you bury those 400 hitters in your lineup for moments like these. He's got a lot of work in front of him, especially facing Reed Harder, an experienced pitcher here in the state tournament, but there is runner on second and third. Could get interesting. McKnight, one for three on the day. He's going to ground out to Lamley. And that'll retire the side. No runs on one hits. They'll strand two. We go to the home half of the eight. Pheasants looking for some insurance runs as the Storm have been pesky today. We'll step away and be back in 60. Harry K. Ford is your only dealer who does $29.95 oil changes every day. Yep, that includes all the oil for the vehicle. Those other guys don't do that. As a Venture Communications customer, you're ready for tomorrow. Where you live, the world's at your fingertips through a fast and reliable fiber optic internet connection. You can choose the RushNet broadband speed you want, all the way up to a gigabit. And your own team of technical experts are ready to help 24-7. Change your world with RushNet high-speed internet. Be ready for tomorrow. Get connected. 
Call Venture Communications today. Your local cooperative has a new name. CHS Northern Plains and CHS Midwest Cooperative have joined together to better serve you under the new name CHS River Plains. You gain more options and more value with access to global markets and a powerful supply chain. And you can do more every day using inputs delivered by a team who knows what you need, when you need it. Visit us online at chsriverplains.com or stop in today and let us help you own every day. So let's go ahead and take a look at these changes. Jesse Gross Didier of the Plankington Gold Sox is at second base. JJ Beck has slid over from second base to shortstop. And shortstop Jade Vanderwerf slides over to third base. At first base, it's still, I believe, Christofferson. Vanderwerf is over at third. In the outfield, it's still Bose. McKnight and Jaden Frank in right field. That looks to be it. McKnight went from third base to first. Leading off the bottom of the eighth inning. So we're trying to do double duty up here in the press box. Chandler Bakley will be your batter for the winner. Clome Pheasants. Bakley two for three today in that cleanup spot. First one going to be ripped foul and out of play behind uh, the stadium back in the uh, grill area. Winter Cologne looking for some insurance runs here in the bottom of the eighth. You know, they got some pretty good hitters coming up and uh, they have an opportunity to bust this one open. So it is Christofferson at first, Jesse Gross Didier at second base, JJ Beck has went to shortstop, Jade Vanderwerf slides from shortstop third in the outfield defensively for the storm. This one's going to be ripped into that left center gap. Chandler Bakley, three for four today. You want production out of that four spot. Chandler's going to do it with a double. McKnight is now in left field. Blake Bowes in center. Uh, McKnight is in left. I believe it might still be Frank. Bowes is definitely in center. Frank is over in right field. So it is McKnight in left. Second base for Winter Cologne, number seven, Zach Carter. Everybody clap your hands. Yeah, so Harder comes back from a Clark, just shows up, and now he's pinch running. <laughs> That's awesome. Zach Harder shows up. I guarantee from you just got dressed. State tournament coaching duties, and now he just dressed in the parking lot in the dugout. Now I he's pinch running. I just love got it. done holding up a fifth place trophy in Clark, and now he's out there. I love it. Austin Calhoun, your batter at the plate for the winner, Clone Pheasants. Paul Taggart has done a great job in relief trying to keep the Pheasants to six. Austin Calhoun going to flip one over into right field. McKnight's got no play, and that's a base hit for Austin Calhoun. Jody, here come the Pheasants. <laughs> you don't want to let up if you're the storm here. It's been so good. Neil Hyla going to take a good timeout trip to the mound going to have a conversation with Paul Taggart and they're not going to wait they're going to go to Blake Bowes in the sixth pitcher of the game for the South Central Storm we're going to step away we'll be back after these defensive changes are you looking to steal a deal on your next vehicle whether you're looking for a car truck or SUV shop from over 1,000 vehicles at menholtauto.com Menholt Auto Group is a proud supporter of the South Dakota State Baseball Tournament and would like to wish good luck to all participating players and teams. Have a great game and knock one out of the park from Denny Menholt Rapid Chevrolet, Toyota, and Rushmore Honda. All three stores conveniently located off I-90 Exit 60, Rapid City. 
At Ashley Home Store, when we say we got it, we really mean it. We've got all the popular styles for every room in your home, as well as some of the highest quality and customer ratings in the industry. Not to mention, we've also got the top mattress brands like Sealy, Tempur-Pedic, and Ashley Sleep, and payroll deduction financing available so you can take time to pay. So come in today and see why your Pierre Ashley Home Store is the top choice for everything home. Hurry in, we're located on South Garfield Avenue in Pier. This is home. Right now is a great time to be planning for the next growing season. Fall fertilizer application can give your crops a strong start in the spring. Because the nutrients available and needed in each field vary, your Actegra agronomist can help determine your specific nutrient needs and the benefits of applying them now. To optimize your inputs for next year's crop, contact your Actegra agronomist for details or visit Actegra.com today. Oh. Number 21, Paul Taggart. Defensive changes. We're going to go ahead and get these for you. Third, number three, Dave Vanderwerk. It's going to be Blake Bowes coming in field. here, trying to number close 12, things out Brandon for the South McKnight. Central Storm. The lefty got a great arm, has had a great season. Bowes, four and three game. on the year, but he got a lot number of the heavy lifting facing, you know, the, the four corners, the Plankington F&M bankers, the Kimball. White Lake uh, Nationals. He, he had a lot of those matchups. So with Bose coming in from center field, it's Taggart in right. You're going to see Jaden Frank go to center field. And your attention, Braden, now Brandon Bose McKnight is now in left field. Two, the infield is still Christofferson at first. Jesse Gross Didier of the Plankington Gold Sox is at second base. J.J. Beck has slid to shortstop and Jade Vanderwerf is over at third base. Dylan Jay Winter still catching. Love this. They've played five of their pickup players in this game, and it's a 6-3 game, and they have a chance. They're looking for Bows to close out the Pheasants, cutting a miss by Lamley, make it 0-1, but it's allowing Calhoun to move up to second. He'll take it on defensive indifference. So with no outs, there's a pair of runners in scoring position. They bring Bows out to close out the Pheasants. 0-1 the count to Dylan Lamley. Suicide squeeze is Bakley. No, that was Zach Harder, who's courtesy running for, at third base. Was scooting down the line, and Lamley just couldn't quite get it down the right field line. J.J. Farner is on deck. Oscar Pravacek in the hole for the Pheasants. Remember, these two teams faced each other May 11th. It was a 13-4 Pheasants victory. Lamley going to turn on one and deliver a single to left field. Calhoun digging for home. The throw from McKnight, a little tardy. And that's an RBI, two RBI single by Dylan Lamley. That'll make your score 8-3, to three and he'll take second on the throw to home plate. Dylan Lamley, the savvy vet, producing again for the winter clone pheasants. And playing second base, number 23, J.J. Farner. J.J. Farner will step to the plate. He just entered the game. J.J., a 389 hitter with limited at-bats this year because he's had, he's most of the time, he's pitching. He's got a DH for him. We didn't see him at the plate often, but a 389 hitter, when he gets his opportunities, he's able to produce. 389 is not bad uh, oh. at all. <laughs> And he uh, comes up here, like you said, does a lot of pitching, uh, but still, let's see what he can do here with one in scoring position and none down, Jody. That's really a bad spot right now for the Storm. He played so well, kept it close, and it's a two RBI single. That's the dagger from Dylan Lamley. He's done that a few times this year for the Pheasants. Lamley always with those clutch hits. Uh, also on a side note, looks like Al's back. Good. Al probably just got himself hydrated, maybe. A nap. Yeah. <laughs> J.J. Farner looking at a 2-1 count. Bose is going to step off the rubber and walk Dylan Lamley back into second. Bose delivery, nice-looking fastball. Can't catch the knees. Count will go 3-1. It'll be a hitter's count for J.J. Farner. This is where J.J.'s dangerous. He'll zone up, look for something belt high, and he will drive it if he gets his pitch. 
It's going to be inside, and that'll be a base on balls. So now you go to the number eight hitter in the lineup. The Pheasants going 8-9-1 with bases loaded. And Camerzal, Brandon Camerzal, not your typical eight hitter. As we've said all day, both these teams have tucked 400 hitters into that number eight spot. Camerzal, a 404 hitter on the season, and he is 0 for 2 today. But all kinds of production. He's walked twice, scored a, uh, scored a run, and drove in an RBI. And Camerzal will... Be retired. I'd call that pretty ideal for Winter Cologne advancing the runners. Only one out now, but uh, two in scoring position. Okay. I thought the bases were juiced. Look for back to back bunts here out of Lake and Negabauer. The 189 hitter today, um, he's been asked to bunt a lot. He's 0 for 3, has walked and struck out. Derek Gracer. Awaiting an opportunity on deck. This one will skip in and Jay Winter continuing the phenomenal catching that we've seen in this entire state tournament. Knocks that one down. Want to know the count. Blake Bowes, the lefty. Comes set. Going to work out of the stretch with runners on second and third. And this one by Nagabauer is driven to that left center gap. And that's a Texas League single. It's going to be kicked by McKnight. Not will allow a second run to come in and score on the air in left field. Wow. Two runs will score. And like we talked about, okay. Jody, they busted it open. They did. Definitely a base hit. Let's see. That'll make your Forward score to 10 to 3. And shortstop Derek, Gracer. Derek Gracer will now come to the plate. Derek, 1 for 4 today, has drove in a run and scored himself. Bose gets this uh, call to the bump. And on I. <laughs> Very unideal situation. Bases loaded with no outs. The young man inherited tough spot. Four and three on the season, trying to work the storm out of this and give themselves a chance there in the top of the ninth. One away here in bottom of eight. Goose will cut on and miss for strike two. One and two the count. Taking a look, it was uh, Aaron Sunquist to start the day, then Steiner, then McKnight, then Beck, then Taggart, then Bose. A collective effort to keep him close. Winter will see that one skip in front of him. And Lake and Nagabauer with those wheels is now out there second base in scoring position. First time these two teams played, it was, what, it was 6 nothing. It made it 6-1, and then Pheasants broke it open. They went on for a 13-4 victory. This game a much different game than that first one that I saw early in the season. Goose is going to get rung up with a backwards K for out number two. That'll bring to the plate Jeff Harris, the pickup the player out of Parkston. Right fielder, Jeff, Harris. Jeff Harris, one for four on the day, has walked and drove in a run. Harris, you know... Pickup player, 360 hitter. Doesn't get much better than that. He, he he's solid. <laughs> Great pickup for the Pheasants. I believe they finished, what, third in districts? Who's that? Uh, Winter Cologne. Uh, second to Dimmick Emery. Oh, correct, right. Yep. They were last the last victim of the Dimmick Emery Raptors who were on that incredible postseason run. They led that game 7-2 to two and end up dropping it. 10 to 7 as the Raptors came from behind to get the victory. But, you know, talking to a lot of the Winter Clone players, it worked out well for them the way the draw worked out. Right. I think they got who they wanted to uh, pick up player wise for the Sunshine League. You got, uh, they took Bamberg, Dan McHenry did, or Dan McHenry did. No, Alexandria did. Oh, right. So who. Who did uh, Dan McHenry pick up? We're going to take a look. Because they got first pick, 
and then they obviously uh, moved on to Winter Cologne. They take Harris. They were looking for help in the outfield. Dimmick Emery's pickup player was it, it was Luke Bamberg. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Bamberg goes one. Harris goes two, and then who ended up third? Alexandria, Alexandria did. And they take Ooh. Aaron Gronowick. Not only the So there's going to be a retired. Cologne, Jeff Harris is retired on strikes. Four runs, four hits. Winter Cologne with four runs on four hits. After there was inning, one Cologne, South ten. Central air, and they'll and strand South one. Three. We go to the ninth Bam, frame. Of South Friday, Central down to their final three, three outs. We'll be back for that in Again, 60 seconds. In Harry K. Ford, your go-to dealer for transparency and the lowest prices. From sales to service, we pride ourselves on transparency and low prices. It's who we are every day. Family, friends, and Fords, in that order. We've got a history of serving you. A history of family-owned community banking that goes back over 100 years. We grew up here. We're local. And local ownership means local decisions. It means our products are tailored to meet local needs. We take pride in our support of many local organizations and encourage community growth through charitable contributions and employee involvement. First Fidelity Bank, member FDIC. First class banking on a first name basis. Feel more confident and in control of your financial life. Ameriprise Advisors can work with you to provide personalized, goal-based advice based on your short and long-term goals. Plus, you can track your investments and financial solutions with our digital tools and regular meetings. Call John Pokup at 1-800-713-9160 to see the multiple ways they can help you on your retirement journey. Legacy Financial Partners, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC, is located at 218 South Monroe Street in Winter, South Dakota. Member FINRA and SIPC. Welcome back to the ninth inning of the final game of the first round. South Central will send Jay Winter, the catcher, to the plate to start things off. Jay taking a look at the Game Changer app. One for two on the day, and he has an RBI. Drove in that first run of the game to get the Storm chipping away at that Pheasants lead. It's going to take a look at a Reed Harder ball. He's up in the count, 1-0. Here's Jay Winter. Next pitch going to be a called strike. Reed Harder playing Picasso. One and one. Reed will come set. And Reed works quick. <laughs> Little shorter reach than what you saw to Paul Taggart, but it's kind of the same throwing motion over the top. Tight and over the top. This one will miss outside for ball two. Two and one the count. Taking a look at the official line in the game so far. South Central with three runs on eight hits. They've committed six errors. This one going to be popped up. Gracer will call off Camerzel and take it for the F6 put out. For the storm, the top of the order. The center fielder, Jaden Frank. Jaden Frank, the leadoff hitter, will step to the plate. Jaden, one for four. I know he's a 500 batter on the season. I think 507, if I remember correctly. Singled in his last at bat, looking to go back to back hits here. Keep this game alive for the storm. He'll be followed by Gross to Deer from Plank. You know, a pickup player, your last opportunity possibility, or possibly to. Uh, to go up, that'd be a tough way to end the season. And interestingly, Gross did here playing for the Plankington Gold Sox, a brand new franchise here in South Dakota amateur baseball. This one going to be flared out to right field. Jeff Harris will for South Central, camp Center underneath it for out number Swagger. two, and there's Correction. two away. Now batting, number 22, Jesse Grosadier. Gross Didier will come to the plate, and he's part of that. One of the newest franchises. I will tell you what. Uh, give them five years and 
they'll be a pretty solid club, I'd say. Christina, you're going to chop this one foul facing Reed Harder. Reed Harder looking for the save for the Pheasants. I do know the Gold Sox got eliminated by Miller Wessington. And that's how Jesse ended up here. That one, Anthony's called strike two. So let's see what kind of 0-2 uh, hitter Mr. Gross Didier is. Good friend of mine, Jesse. Going to fight this one off, foul it down the first baseline. Count will remain. No balls, two strikes. Been a fun one. Yes. Oh, yes. And I need to celebrate with Eric McPeak. Eric McPeak. McPickles selling it, celebrating his birthday today. That one just missed the light, Jody. Just missed the light. Just. Jen Duffy, Brock Sundahl, one of the commissioners for the Pony Hill League. So a lot of birthdays to celebrate out there today. Three foul balls in a row for Jesse. No, it was never three. It was never three to three. The O two. The O two. Bruce Didier going to flare one out into right field. Always a nice feeling to be a pickup player, come out and contribute. He'll single for the ninth hit of the game for South Central. That'll bring the number three hitter to the plate. This is J.J. Beck. Four of the storm. J.J., the one for four on the J. day. Big hack. Ooh, and this one's going to be popped up. And Reed Harder with a unbelievable error. You never see. <laughs> That's E1. Tried to basket catch it and saw it pop off the back of his heel. You know, <laughs> the thing is, that won't do much. In all likelihood, it's Four not going far. to, but it's just even more right surprising that... He would make that mistake. Rather Paul make it now than in the championship. Or semis or wherever. Oh, there we Taggart, go. Taggart, 0 for oh. 0 on the day. Reed Harder. Nope, that's going to be a hit. Paul Taggart will load the bases on that single. That will put Gross Didier at third. Beck at second and Taggart at first. That's a hit. And that will bring to the plate Cole Christofferson, the first baseman. He's one for four, has struck out, four South Central, the first and scored a run. This one driven to right field, and Jeff Harris will close it out. South Central will come up with no runs on one hit. They will strand two hits. Score. They will three strand Winter three. Cologne Winter Cologne Pheasants will move on to play the Salem Cubs on Wednesday night. Our next broadcast won't be Charlie or I. It's going to be back. We'll be back tonight at 5.30. In an hour, we've got queued up. The Millbank Fire Chiefs going to be taking on the Dimmick Emory Raptors, looking to continue that and unlikely postseason run. We'll see. I'm guessing it's going to be Phil Johnson on the mound for the Raptors in all likelihood. And I can't wait to we'll see right Phil. I thought he looked great goal. the other night. That arm's rested. Milbank going to come with Dom, um, Dom Bomberger. Berger, uh, yep. yep, the lefty. 
And this should be just a whale of a first game in the second round tonight at 5.30. Charlie, any closing thoughts before we get out of here? You know, just uh, a really solid game for Winter Cologne. They showed why they're here. They showed why they have a past year. And we'll see them again. Wednesday night? It's going to be a good one. Yes, Wednesday night at 7.30, they'll take on the Salem Cubs. For Charlie Preen, this is Jody Brozik. We're going to sign off. Get ready for our next game. We want to thank you for watching and listening to the 2021 South Dakota Amateur Baseball Tournament here on LiveTicket.tv. See you tonight, we hope.